keep the guy on the line. We're putting a trace on the call. Adam Curry, John C. Dvorak. It's Sunday, April 16, 2023. This is your award-winning Get My Nation Media Assassination, episode 1547. This is No Agenda. Devoid of any intelligence clearance and broadcasting live from the heart of the Texas Hill Country here in FEMA region number six. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where somebody's celebrating the fact that today's the day the Germans shut down their last two nukes. I'm John C. Dvorak. It's Craig Vaughn and Buzzkill in the morning. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I happen to have a clip of this insanity. <laughs> Unbelievable. What is wrong with the Germans? Here, this uh, I, f- fr- Yes. I, yeah, I, I, I'm of the opinion now that this is being done on purpose to try to jack the Germans up. Well, they're going to get jacked up. But I mean, the, the whole, Did you know that this is also the same week that Finland finally opened up their 1.6 gigawatt nuclear reactor after 16 years? No, I did not know. That part I did not know. Yeah, I don't have a clip of that, of course, because why would we, why would we tell anybody about that? No, I think it's like 30% of their energy is going to be covered by nuclear. But here's uh, France 24. Yeah, Nick, talk to us a little bit about the history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I left this in. You can hear how phony baloney these reports are. So there's a guy standing. Uh, I don't know if he's actually standing in front of the nuclear reactor being shut down. He could just be, he could have just pulled over by the side of the road. And of course, he knows exactly what question he's going to get from HQ. And then this hilarity happens. Yeah, Nick, talk to us a little bit about the history of nuclear energy in Germany. Yeah, Monty, I, I lost the phone connection here, so I couldn't hear that, that, that question. But I, I, we, I know we were going to talk about the history here oh, of yeah. nuclear in Germany. <laughs> and it started really in 19... 19- <laughs> so <laughs> It's so phony. It's like, wow. They all know what the script is. Like, Monty, uh, tell me about the history. Uh, I knew we were going to talk about the history. 61 with the opening of the first reactor and uh, to the skepticism of energy supply. Wait, 1960. By the way, there's some, some weird noise in this thing. Uh, that's that'll go away. That's that was in there. Sounds connection. like the traffic noise. No, it's in the, it's someone's phone. I think their their connection. But did this their first reactor opened in 1961? Is that possible? Yeah, oh yeah. It sounds early. Well, I mean, they were talking big game about all this stuff in the fifth, mid, mid-50s. Right. Yeah. Really in 1961 with the opening of the first reactor and uh, to the skepticism of energy supply companies. And then it grew until in the 1990s, there were some 17 nuclear reactors. But this whole journey came through a lot of controversy. There was opposition, particularly after the Three Mile Island incident in 1976 in Chernobyl. You can imagine how that focused. Uh, attention here in Germany and the whole process of contesting nuclear power gave birth to Europe's biggest Green Party and Green Party movement, the people who are in government now. And uh-huh. then what really, really tipped uh, the hand of government here was the Fukushima nuclear disaster uh, in uh, under Angela Merkel's reign, she decided in 2011. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, we should just pause for a moment. Makes it sound like she did it. (laughs) Not only that, but the Fukushima nuclear disaster was not a nuclear disaster. It was uh, a tsunami that was the disaster. And yes, there there was um, an issue with cooling down the rods, but no one fried. They've been back to Fukushima many times. And, you know, there's lots of plant life and, and animals running around. Everybody's all happy and jacked up. No one's dying over there. But, uh, you know, you forget that part. Oh, the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Uh, Under Angela Merkel's reign, she decided in 2011 (laughs) that it was time to shut down all of Germany's nuclear plants uh, by the 2030s. However, that whole schedule uh, was was advanced when this new coalition government came into power. Uh, Germany is now, in the past year, only generating about 6% of its electricity from nuclear power. In the past three months, it's been around 3%. Even if these nuclear plants are being shut down, the controversy will continue because you have to decommission these plants. That takes 15 years and store tens of thousands of tons of nuclear waste somewhere. So there'll be a lot more discussion, even though the era of nuclear energy in Germany is over. Unbelievable. So from the sounds of it, there were at least those old, this is the old plants. Mm Mm-hmm. New plants, of course, are different technologies and yeah, they, much more efficient. No waste. But, they, they eat their own waste. 
But let's just look at this from the perspective of old plants. So by from their calculation, it would take 25 old plants to power the whole country perfectly. Yeah. Because it's 2% per plant. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Seems but- reasonable. Put 25 plants up here and there. It's a big country. <laughs> Put meanwhile, them all in East Germany. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're just shutting down in East Germany. Meanwhile, they're shutting down uh, you know, industry because they can't afford it. It's it's so odd. I mean, the Germans have been under some kind of mind control. I'm not sure how that works. And so, I mean, I, I am obviously because the mind control is so strong. So tell me what's wrong logically with this very short little report here from ABC. Last summer alone, the U.S. saw five flood events described as thousand year floods from the Midwest to Texas and California. A recent study warned floods are becoming more frequent and less seasonal due to climate change and our infrastructure is not keeping up. I mean, if it's a thousand year flood, then wouldn't you have one in a thousand years, not five? Is this weird logic on my on my part? Oh, they're just throwing these terms out there because it sounds <laughs> bad. But what is this about the infrastructure? They need to we need to build more aqueducts or bigger reservoirs or what's the deal? Uh, what were they referring to? Oh, let me hear it again. I don't know. Last summer, yeah, alone, it the is. The infrastructure is not keeping up with climate change. Oh, let's listen to West saw five flood events described as thousand year floods from the Midwest to Texas and California. A recent study warned floods are becoming more frequent and less seasonal due to climate change, and our infrastructure is not keeping up. Well, I think that means solar, windmills. I guess no, it can't <laughs> mean solar. <laughs> it has to mean reservoirs and aqueducts. Because they're talking about floods. I don't. Th- I don't think that's what he's really thinking about. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying. Doesn't sound right. You know. But, I, but you know, they're not using much of the. Well, I guess that's the Florida flood, right? But have you? Spoke- no. Yeah. I talked to Horowitz yesterday. Yeah. Was he all? Is he all in on climate change now? Now that he was no. almost, almost died from six more inches. No, he's all in on cooking shrimp. So. Uh, <laughs> It was a close call, though, for him, I think. Yeah, he says it got a, within like a foot of his, you know, flooding the house, but the house never got flooded, but the backyard was kind of ruined, and the yeah. boat was lifted out of the out of his container there and dropped in the, like, almost dropped in the backyard. Uh, and he's has friends who have boats on top of their houses, you know, kind of thing. No, I, I weep for their $100,000 boats. I, I don't, I'm... I'm yeah, oh, so those bad. poor <laughs> bastards in Florida, their damn boats. I feel so bad for him. But his Tiki Hut, so did the Tiki Hut get washed away? I didn't specifically ask, but it sounded like it got wrecked. No, because a tiki hut is pretty cool that he has there. I always like that. And you know, uh, you know, it's a tiki hut. How hard can it be to rebuild it? Well, he had some Hawaiian guys or some Ma- Maoris come and build it. You know, so well, it's, it's, they're it's probably still floating around building tiki huts. <laughs> Florida is needing more tiki huts. <laughs> Literally, they're floating around. And thank you all for sending us uh, your videos of uh, of fish swimming on the street. It's not quite flopping. You know, like oh, here's a. Here's a catfish swimming around my hangar. Yeah, but the fish has to be flopping for it to they be. They got to be flopping. For it to be Al Gore's prediction. You know, they have to be flop, And it should be Miami. It was a little missed to say Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, any place else is not good. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I think we need to get into the, the incredible news of the week, uh, which, I ha- which I can summarize in 25 second clip, at least how the U.S. News, I say news with big air quotes, news media is handling this by uh, listening to this, this clip from The Five on Fox News. No, I don't even know if these leaks are real. I don't know if they're half real, half true. That's true. Disinformation, if it's all good. I don't even know. I don't even know if I'm allowed to read the leaks. Does Fox News have a policy that we are we? Can, I think you can read them, but if you actually, if you, this is kind of weird. If you have a classified security clearance, you are not allowed to read them. Okay, even though they're on the front page of the New York Times. Okay, so this clip kind of sums it all up. What we're not talking about is the incredible news that was in the leaks, and one of those people on the five clearly has clearance, and I think Dana Perino probably. She's like, well, you know, you can't read it if you if you if you have, if you have a clearance. What kind and of- by the way, let's, that goes. We've talked about this before in the show. That is plain idiotic. 
If you have clearance, and they should address this and stop it, because for one thing, it's giving away, this is like spycraft. It's giving away who the spies are. <laughs> yes, you're right. Well, I, I can't read it, but you can. I, okay, I, well, then that means you're a spook and, and the other guy's not. If it's, been, if it's been published in the New York Times on the front page, by rule, it should be released to the people who have clearance. They should be able to now go see it. Same with WikiLeaks. It's, if I can read it and you can read it and we're not spooks, a spook should be able to read it to try to keep up with us. So, so I'm, How, where, where's the logic here? I'm not getting it. Okay, <laughs> I, I do have a copy of the memorandum for senior Pentagon leadership, commanders of the combatant commands, defense agency, and DOD field activity directors, which uh, very clearly states: do not access documents with classified markings from unclassified websites as data may be classified. <laughs> it's so, it's, wow. It's so good. Um, now, my, my sources tell me that the way this went down is, is actually plausible, which I, I find fantastic. Uh, but, the, but the fact that Bellingcat is involved in this just screams bull not necessarily the information is bull crap, but this was this was meant to be released for a number of reasons. I'd have to agree. So before we get into it, so I just tell you some of the things that are actually in the information. I mean, does well, that, I think our clip let's do the clips first because you have it in some because of your I think a lot of that will be in the clips, at least the clips I have from okay. Amy Goodman. Oh, and all I have is hold on. warning. <laughs> well, not Amy yet. Goodman. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I only have the bullcrap M5M stuff, I don't have anything of any value. I mean, they do let some. Some Hold on a second. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> I don't have anything of any value. <laughs> there's no value because you only have M5M clips. Okay. Of course. But well, that's what we do. But there's value in deconstructing what they're saying. And there's value in yeah. what they're doing with this, but not in the actual, what's in the actual documents. That, that's what's so crazy. That's well, luckily, uh, Amy, or maybe we should go to her. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, then. here we go. Warning. <laughs> Amy Goodman clip inbound. All right, all right. <laughs> False alarm. So let's start with Leaker from NPR, Leaker 1. President Biden says he's directed the military and intelligence communities to take steps to further secure sensitive information. That's after a massive leak of sensitive documents came to light. On Friday, a 21-year-old member of the Air National Guard named Jack Teixeira appeared before a federal judge in Boston. He's facing charges that he leaked highly classified information that include details about Russian moves in Ukraine and the strength of the Ukrainian army. Joining us now to talk about all of this is NPR's Pentagon correspondent, Tom Bowman. Good morning, Tom. Hey, Miles. So Ooh. what steps can the intelligence community even take after a breach like this? Well, the first thing, obviously, is, is to restrict access to who sees this kind of information. Now, there are at least several thousand people who have access to this classified information, which came out of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the Pentagon. Wait a minute. Did he just say the first thing we need to do is restrict people who have access from reading it is that what i heard him say uh i thought i i, I didn't think it was to stop them from reading it was stop stopping them from accessing it okay all right which is kind of the same but yeah. i don't think that's what he said mm. okay all right yeah i don't know let's go with number two <laughs> okay numero oops what happened here yes numero two Tell me a little bit more, Tom, about why this leak matters more broadly. Well, I'm told the big problem is with release of these kinds of documents, these sensitive documents, is it alerts your adversaries. So the U.S. is picking up electronic communications like phone calls or other information from the Russians. That will all quickly dry up because they can change phone numbers, radio frequencies, do forensics on which information came from which command and which location. It makes it much harder to glean information from the Russians. Huge problem. NPR's Tom Bowman. Thank you so much, Tom. You're welcome. What was that report? That would, Was that number two? That should uh, yeah, be number you three. Know what? You, they're out of order because you have this weird exclamation mark. I'm sorry. That was number three. You titled them with exclamation marks, and so it, it, it moved three above two. 
Sorry. Well, it still says three. I, I'm sorry. Okay, well, that was the end of it. But <laughs> two, I think, is my... <laughs> Just pretend you didn't hear that. But it, now that I think about it, it wasn't that interesting, number three. <laughs> no. So let's go to number two, which I Alre- think is interesting. Okay. Already the Pentagon is removing people from this information. I was talking with some folks last night who lost that access, and they have high-level jobs. So that will continue. Hey. But as far as how many people they're restricting, we just don't know. And then there's this bigger question, right, of – how did a 21-year-old IT specialist working in an airbase in Cape Cod even get access to this highly classified information? That's what the investigation will determine, and neither the Pentagon nor the Justice Department is really saying much at all right now. I spoke with a retired senior officer who did have access to this kind of intelligence. He speculates that Teixeira likely gained access to something called the Joint Worldwide Intelligence Communication System, or JWIX, Pentagon likes acronyms. That's a secure internet system that would contain all kinds of top secret information. Now, that's how Chelsea Manning, the former army soldier and whistleblower convicted back in 2013. That's how she was able to grab thousands of documents and and release them. Now, when that happened, the Pentagon and other agencies put a lot of controls over who had access, limiting them on a need-to-know basis. They created separate groups, also subgroups. So let's say, Miles, you're an intelligence analyst or an officer working on Taiwan issues. After that, you would not be able to have access to anything related to Ukraine. Or let's say you work the Ukraine issue. Maybe you could see some intel on Ukraine, but not the more sensitive information, such as, you know, what's being picked up on Russian communications. (laughs) Wow, they they didn't give us anything either, did they? No, they're not going to give. We get a little bit from Amy, when, which is coming up. But let's go back over what they said, which is the uh, their concern is not. Uh, I mean, it, they, the Chelsea Manning thing happened. Mm-hmm. We we know that. So they supposedly said, "Oh, geez, this is no good. Let's fix things." So so now it's it's was fixed, and this guy, an airman. And by the way, people should, if you don't know this, an airman first class is the same as a private first class in the army. Very low level. It's like ra- uh, radar, or- but basically radar. Yeah, ra- yeah, from, <laughs> from the mass show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have this guy having access to all this stuff, and it just it's so deep how much stuff he's got. Uh, well, hold, hold, looks hold, like- hold on. We, we we know from the past, and this goes back probably back to the man the Manning years. Um, that the the systems within Defense Department, and you know, there's this is what like I think we have a clip. They call a journeyman for some reason, which basically is a contractor, or he's contracted out to do different things. But when it comes to IT admin stuff, one of our producers literally was the sys admin for the drone systems, and when that person she, but when that person left, um. Uh, she, you know, she was told, "Oh, just stick the admin password on a post-it note on the on the monitor." You remember that? I do. And and you know, and, and things were unencrypted, especially the drone uh, uh, signals were unencrypted. I mean, that may have been fixed, but th- that's the or not. But you know, the, you have these contracting entities that come in, and so much changes, and because you know, this is billions, <laughs> hundreds of billions of dollars. We see it every single day in the in the defense uh, email. You know, uh, four hundred million dollars, one one bidder on the internet. I mean, this is a this website. Is, <laughs> this is the level that this stuff goes, and and, and we and should careless. mention that this this contracting thing is completely out of control in the military, yeah. where they're contracting out food services. Yeah. And said, so, do you remember when you, when I was a kid, they always joke about, well, you get in the army, you do KP, KP you peel duty. potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody peels potatoes. No, you get Burger King. Yeah, or, or yeah, whoever, or the same whoever guys the who contract. service the airlines, those horrible food yeah. stuff. But let me, let me just run down a few. The, P, the BBC, interestingly enough, actually gave eight key takeaways of what the leaked Pentagon documents reveal. I thought that was surprising. The BBC. I'll just give the headlines. UN boss too accommodating to Russia, which I, this is uh, Antonio Guterres. He was apparently too willing to accommodate Russian interests, according to files. So, so he now he is. That's not good for the U- UN Secretary General. It's not a good look for him. 
Uh, Jordan feared Chinese retaliation over Huawei. Did you even hear about that being in these documents? Nope. No. 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 The thing is, you these documents are deep. Yes. Uh, and that, these, I'm sure this little list that you have here is something no one's heard about because no one's covering it. But that's the tip of the iceberg. Russian infighting over Ukraine dead. So we, we know that. So yeah, what's the real number? Western special forces operating inside Ukraine, including uh, the UK, Latvia, France, the US, and the Netherlands. Well, that's called boots on the ground. Yep. Um, U.S. dims hopes for Ukraine offensive. Uh, Egypt secretly planned to supply rockets to Russia. Yeah. <laughs> South Korea torn on delivering weapons to Ukraine. Well, that's not, we kind of knew that. Ebb China conducted experimental weapons tests with um, a hypersonic glide vehicle. I mean, these are kind of interesting things. Well... That takes us to Amy. No, I'm not going to play the warning. No, anymore. you don't have to no. play. You already played it once. Yeah. All right. So that her report, and this was, I think, on Friday, was a lot of a lot of little tidbits, and I'm going to play one of them because I think it's very interesting, and then I want to play a, a, an interview she did with uh, this guy Bamford, who's a spy. Uh, no, he writes books about wait, the spy don't we, Who's Bamford? We know this guy, Bamford, don't we? Yeah, it's, I can't remember his first name. It's, he's, it, she introduces him. Okay. But let's play leaks, tidbits. This is a, I, I think this is interesting. The leak of the documents has also revealed how the United States spied on its own allies. One leaked Pentagon memo alleges that the Mossad, Israel's spy agency, had encouraged Israelis to take part in the massive protests against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plan to go the Israeli judiciary. Ah! <laughs> so that was interesting. And by the way, I, huh. I did a little research on this uh, for a previous show. This gutting the judiciary and the fact that the Mossad is turned against Netanyahu and they're, they're working against him, kind of like the way CIA did with Trump. Yep. It, no, not, not kind of. Exactly. If you If you look into... This judiciary problem where, you know, 30% of the judiciary could determine anything they wanted in Israel. It's very much like the CIA against Trump. So the, um, what, what Netanyahu wants to do, he thinks it's a problem that the judiciary has so much power and they can pretty much just veto any law uh, that the Knesset and he and everybody puts together. And he doesn't like that. And, and I don't know if he's going to ever get that fixed, but he's not trying to gut them. What it is, is the other thing, which is, I think, more important, is that the way things are now, to get a new member into the judiciary, the old judiciary <laughs> people. Yeah, they decide. <laughs> they decide. Yeah. They have to have, it's got to be one of their buddies. Yeah. yeah it's so like it's the- like, <laughs> it's, it's as if the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, could say, oh, you can't put him in, in with us. We need another conservative. How would you like that yeah. situation to be like that? That's no good. Yeah. In fact, they, they say that democracy is over in, uh, in Israel. I didn't play. I had a whole bunch of clips on this. Um, and, and, you know, and all this demonstration was basically like Black Lives Matter, you know, outraged uh, uh, leftists who are just you know, causing a ruckus, making it look like the whole country uh, was against uh, Netanyahu, yeah. which is far from the truth. This James Banford guy, um, do you trust him? I like what he's got to say in, this, in these... Uh, I don't distrust him. Okay, because he's basically just a, a, a journalist and author. He has no... Uh, and he's a Berkeley uh, alum. <clears throat> Yeah, well, that is, that's not yeah. good. No, that's that's strike against. Well, I, that's I a am strike. too. It's, yeah, well, on. hello. There you go. Now we know why you're, he's your buddy. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go with the uh, uh, part one. And this is not the, the the clip that you'll get a kick out of one of these clips. So this is part one. 
Many of the documents are based on information gathered by some of the most secret wings of the U.S. intelligence community, including National Reconnaissance Office, the NRO, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the State Department's Bureau of Intelligence and Research, the Pentagon's DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, and the National Security Agency, the NSA. We go now to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by James Bamford, longtime investigative journalist and author focused on the intelligence community. In 1982, he published The Puzzle Palace, the first book exposing the inner workings of the NSA, the National Security Agency. His latest book, just out, is called Spy Fail, Foreign Spies, Moles, Saboteurs, and the Collapse of America's Counterintelligence. Uh, Jim, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us again. Why don't you just start off by, as you evaluate um, what has been released, this intelligence, um, if it's real, and by all accounts it looks real, of the U.S. spying on adversaries and allies, uh, talk about what's most significant and where these documents are from. Well, in terms of significance, I think the most significant uh, uh, outcome of this is is uh, uh, danger that we may lose actual human beings in uh, in Russia, because a lot of the documents uh, indicate that we have collected information from uh, the inner workings of the Russian government, uh, the intelligence services, mm-hmm. and the. Uh, the military. So um, there are people that may be giving us information, and now that these documents have come out, it gives the Russians an opportunity to uh, to do a mole hunt, to hunt for people who are giving uh, that information away. Uh, as a matter of fact, officials uh, uh, told the New York Times and the Washington Post that the revelations might lead uh, Russian mole hunters to the doorsteps of American spies uh, uh, in their ranks. Mushroom roll mole hunters. Hey, so that kind of explains the the Wall Street Journal guy, maybe. Ivan uh, Golanov. Yeah. Well, he's you know he's being detained in Russia as a spy. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Mole hunter, Russian mole hunter. I like that. Yeah, yeah hunting that, for moles. That sounds like a, a good reality show. Russian. That would be a great reality yeah, show. We should we should talk to Burnett about it. Okay, on to now. Clip two is more kind of a background or just a basic thing before we get to the good one. Uh, what they call sources of, and methods, uh, both human and technical, that were released by the documents. Now, strangely, mostly uh, documents that are leaked appear in major news organizations: New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, whatever. Um, they never appear on gaming platforms, so this is a first for that. Um, it's hard to say why any of this stuff is appearing or why it's appearing on those uh, platforms. Usually there's three reasons for spying. That was one of the reasons I wrote uh, Spy Fail, because there are so many spies out there that uh, the U.S. never ends up catching. Um, and there's three re- main reasons. One is money, obviously. Most spies uh, want to sell secrets for money. Another is ideological. Uh, They want to uh, help a a foreign government. Uh, They don't care much about money. And the third reason is uh, basically the thrill or else a uh, um, anger. Um, So that could be the reason that uh, these documents were released. The third reason, anger. Uh, Somebody was angry and they decided that they're just going to put these documents on whatever platform they happen to be using. So it's very hard to uh, hard to know uh, the key point is that the government keeps losing documents now for some reason i get a, a high like pachenic vibe from this whole thing i'm not sure why maybe it's just because he write book writes books and stuff i don't know maybe um, i mean you should you go with your gut uh, uh, yeah but i want you to listen to this last clip from this guy all right uh, which is the wow clip <laughs> and i want you to tell me if you've heard of any of this because you brought up something earlier with one of the clips that came out at the beginning that said i never heard of that never knew that uh we're starting you know things are in this things are revealing but he just talks about stuff that he's been been discovering over time and i'd like to know why we don't know any of this that the government keeps losing documents 
a few years ago, um, just a few years ago, uh, the NSA lost uh, uh, upwards of uh, half a billion documents. <laughs> Uh, employees just walking out the door with these documents. Uh, they lost three quarters of uh, cyber weapons, the United States cyber weapons. The NSA lost uh, three quarters of them. Uh, somebody stole them and put them up on auction. The North Koreans ended up getting the cyber weapons, and so did the Russians, and they turned them on the United States. So uh, there is a complete uh, lack of uh, accountability when it comes to um, classified information, top secret documents, and, and so forth. He well, just walks out the door and nobody ever gets fired. Is he... Is he <sighs> Is, now, is he confusing it with Vault 9, which was the, C, the CIA tools? I don't think so. He's, He's talking about NSA tools. tools. Wait, so they don't share their tools? There's no Why tool, would they? No tool sharing going on? <laughs> hey, what do you think? Well, probably not. Okay, so part of this... Uh, he, I, no, and, and, and those were just freely available. He's talking about stuff that was stolen and then auctioned to the North Koreans. On the black, on the dark web, he should have said, and they paid for it in Bitcoin. That would have completed it. Well, that'd have been interesting. It probably did actually. But the point is, is that I didn't know of this. No, this I had not heard either. But it's, it sounds a bit like Vault Nine. But Vault Nine wasn't auctioned. Uh, that's true. That's true. So here's what I get a little bit from this: a bit of a like QAnon bait, you know. So a lot of this may be true. Most of it, all of it may be true, but it just seems like eh, why is this? Why are we only hearing about this now? Why do we? You know, your point is valid. Why are we only hearing about these tools that walked out the door now? Why didn't we hear this before? Why is this? Well, guy they were in me? his book, so the book has been out. So yeah, it's well, not, how come we didn't hear about it when the book up, came out? And why didn't we not hear about it? Then, because who's going to cover it? Nobody, because they, they're all <laughs> because they're all read in. They they can't look at this stuff. Yeah, I think the media is so read in and so. Uh, oh no! Uh, yeah, five by five, all the way. They're all they all have. Cl- I think they all have um, clearance. Yeah, and and because of the stupid rule that if you have clearance, you can't look at this stuff. That's why Dana that's Perino public said domain. It. That's why Dana Perino said it. She said that not for not for anyone watching Fox News. No, she said it for her colleagues. Hey, boys, yeah. boys and girls, just to, just to remind them. So let, let's listen to the M5M, and, and maybe we can pick up some things because there, a lot of this feels very set up. Um, it, it, again, somehow I get this QAnon vibe with whenever I hear Discord and then Bellingcat and 4chan. No, but, Bellingcat. No, I, let, let's stop. Bellingcat was involved it's in this. It's you and Bellingcat. Anytime you hear Bellingcat, that is the uh, the red flag for you, yes. major. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, Bellingcat is a bullcrap organization. That is that when they're involved and NBC's quoting them, you know, like oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. All right, so here's ABC. This is Martha Raddatz. He sat on his parents' back deck, a news helicopter hovering overhead. Okay, so right there, why did the news helicopter know right away to be there? They were, they were, they were clued in. But this is a true FBI, um, FBI in uh, in armored vehicles with flak flak jackets with with camo the gear, flak jackets <laughs> and the camo. And the troop carrier, come on. So this, oh, by the way, so I mentioned in the newsletter that there was one female FBI agent. Yeah, no helmet. With no helmet. And somebody wrote me an email, one of our producers sent a note into this. She, says, she said, or he said, that um, it was probably done on purpose to make it clear to everyone that they had enough diversity that they would have a female <laughs> there and they had to make oh, it good clear. Point. Yeah, so the, yeah exactly. Good point. So she can't wear the helmet because you wouldn't know. Oh man, that would be that, which makes it even more of a charade. Yeah. So when you have the news helicopter and they don't have the guy in custody, they're still getting him. That's a setup. They yeah, they, obviously. They told the news media, "We're going to go get him." 
He sat on his parents' back deck, a news helicopter hovering overhead as an FBI SWAT team SWAT in team. full tactical gear tactical approached. Gear. Yeah. This is the moment they arrested the young man authorities believe may be responsible for the massive leak of top Stop secret information. So, is there, uh, do they do due diligence on these things? Because it seems to me that there was no way that a SWAT team was necessary. Be, unless they don't know anything. <laughs> no. If they're completely f- idiots and yeah. they don't know who this guy is, where yeah. anything about him, <laughs> they've done no work whatsoever. They think it's the, you know, I don't know what they're, they're expecting from this family with the kid, 21-year-old airman first class, that they would come in with full force uh, SWAT team. Unless they don't know what they're doing. Or so it, I don't believe that. No, it's just a full setup. It's a full. This is this is television magic. And authorities believe may be responsible for the massive leak of top secret information that has rattled America and our allies around the world. Rattled. Twenty-one-year-old no. Jack Teixeira with his hands on. And could they get the age right? That's twenty. He's twenty-one, and no one has the age really consistent. Twenty-one-year-old Jack Teixeira with his hands on his head, walking out of his family home in North Dighton, Massachusetts. Agents order him to turn around, and slowly he backs towards them. He is seized, taken into custody, and okay. led to an SUV. Stop again. He's not led to an SUV. He's le- led to a troop carrier, and he sits on the back of it. <laughs> yeah. Now, first of all, he's I, coming I, I, out. I love how you're, you're doing my clips. I love this. Keep, keep at it. But go on. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. <laughs> so, um... He comes out, his hands on his head, he's walking. To, they tell him to turn around and walk backwards. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, because, you know, he might have a ninja throwing star. Well, if he does, he might be in the front. Well, you, <laughs> so he could whip it out. I don't, he's not going to carry in the back necessarily. But what is the point of what just, what is the point if he's coming out? Come on. He's got his hands behind his back. He's walking toward them. Now turn around and walk backwards. What is the point? I'm asking, is there a law enforcement people out there? What is the point of this stupidity? He could trip over a rock walking backwards. He can't see where he's going. It's stupid. And if he trips over a rock and falls on his ass, do they shoot him? <laughs> I, I thought, why didn't they rush him? You know, they, yeah, and why didn't they rush him? Well, that's a good point. They're SWAT. They should have done this with Trump. That would have been great. Make him turn backwards, walk backwards into the courthouse. Today, the Justice Department arrested... Jack Douglas Teixeira, in connection with an investigation into a lead. And I'm amazed that everyone knew how to pronounce his name. I look at that name, I'm like, Texas, what? what, 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 what yeah, I had, there was a kid in my, when I was in grammar school, named Teixeira. Te- oh, okay. Jack Douglas Teixeira, in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Teixeira was a low-ranking enlisted airman, well, an go. IT specialist for the intelligence wing of the Massachusetts Air National Guard at Otis Air Force Base in Cape Cod. Ever since the story of the massive leak exploded into the headlines, the Pentagon and FBI have been on the hunt for the culprit. The hunt. Was it a spy? Was it a rogue foreign power? Then overnight, a blockbuster report in the Washington Post (laughs) describing the man behind the leak, not as an international criminal mastermind, but as a young man trying to impress a small group of other young men and teenagers in a 25-person invitation-only chat group Ah. in the online gaming forum Discord. So they don't even really know what Discord is. And that's kind of fun. You know, you have Discord, Discord servers. You know, you have Discord itself. You know, they immediately say it's associated with the game. Well, yeah, it is, but not necessarily. Lots of people have Discord servers. Um, this, also, this guy also sounds to me not like a sysadmin. He sounds more like the guy who fixes your laptop. You know what I mean? So maybe uh, there was a laptop open. Hey, you know, I can't fix something. I can't print. Typical. Oh, I'll print for you. I can't print. <laughs> listen, listen. That's the, the printer won't work. There's two. I know from, from my dude's name, Ben, there's the two top uh, IT specialist demands. One, uh, my password doesn't work, which is typically because the caps lock is on. And the other is I can't print. So someone's over there. I can't print. Oh, would you look at this? No, I'll print it for you. Don't worry. 
because it was printed out and then folded up. He did not um, uh, exfiltrate it with a USB drive or anything. He printed it, which should be pretty easy, you know, as you have told us for years that uh, pr- all printers have markings on them. So you can find out exactly which uh, printer printed out a document, correct? Yep. They put their, their little light yellow codes that you can't see with the naked eye. So that would be... All printers have. It's, it's, it was the, the, the idea was, and it's not well known, but it's a fact, mm-hmm. uh, because it, it's, it's to prevent counter... It's to, to catch counterfeiters that use uh, ink jets and laser printers. No, we continue. The Post talking to one of those teens, appearing in shadow with his mother's permission. Now, this I love. So this guy, this teen, (laughs) this teen who uh, I guess was uh, under 18 and OG, as they called him, was his best friend. Um, Now you (laughs) uh, this this is all too stupid. This is actually insulting to our intelligence. But, you know, hey, you know, we cover this. The Post talking to one of those teens appearing in shadow with his mother's permission. He described the person who he said posted all those classified documents. He was a young, charismatic man who loved nature, God, who loved shooting guns and and racing cars. Isn't this a clip you played last show? No, no, this I is, think so. No, yeah, you somebody you played this clip. No, not, no, I'm not talking about the clip you're playing now. I'm talking about this kid. D- <laughs> you yeah, played a yes, sub clip. Yeah, this is different. This is different. By the way, the p- people are are questioning your printer story, saying that sounds like some Steve Pachenik bull crap. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about the quantum watermarks. Okay, just explain how you know this from a printer maker. Yeah, I was told about this. Probably in the late eighties. Yeah, they had. They, here's the problem: the laser printers, in particular, were getting so good that you could print, a, you know, a hundred dollar bill, a twenty dollar bill. It's mostly twenties. People were started printing these things on these early laser printers, and so something had to be done to track them down. And so they developed this idea of printing these very light serial. Essentially, it's a serial number. Mm-hmm. Uh, of dots of very super light yellow dots that can be detected with if you put them under a microscope you can find them just run a couple of blank sheets of paper through your printer and you'll see these little they don't necessarily appear on a blank sheet you have to print something they got to print but, something out yeah because uh, otherwise the head's just going to stay there on them okay. but it's on ink jets and I'm pretty sure it's on ink jets but it's on ink jets and lasers I stand with you on this one it makes sense of course it does. Why wouldn't you do this? All right. Onward. Who loved shooting guns and... I love, I love the uh, bringing some white Christian stuff with this. It's always good. And, and racing cars. And God. He did have sort of a bossy <laughs> attitude at some points, but it was more of a fatherly bossy. He did see himself as the leader of this group, and he ultimately, he was the leader of this group. This, this, sound, this kid, I mean, does this sound like your typical 17-year-old or 16-year-old? Or is this someone talking about him? I'm unsure. The teen said that starting no, last... Fall- the, hmm? No, the teen, she said this kid that's talking is a supposedly the 17, 18 year old. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it to me. Oh, the man. You think he, he sounds more mature? Sounds more matured and he's, just, he's, he's not talking. You think he's a plant? Yes. Where's the. Okay. Uh, where's. Have you heard 16 and 17 year olds talk like uh, like uh, he was uh, kind of like the, the, the leader, like of the group, uh, you know, like he was the OG? I simp with him. This is not that guy. Points, but it was more of a father yeah, than I agree. Bossy. He did see himself as the leader of this group, and he ultimately he was the leader of this group. The teen said that starting last fall, the man who he called OG posted hundreds of pages of classified documents to impress his friends in the group. The documents were often listed as Ukraine versus Russia at first. However, it slowly spiraled into just intelligence about everything. How did that feel to know things before the rest of the world knew them? It felt like I was on top of Mount Everest. It felt like I was above everyone Bullshit. else to some degree. And that, um... Hold on. Stop. <laughs> so you, your theory that this is a, a plant, of course, yeah. he's, he's obscured because his mom wouldn't let, you know, he yeah, let but, him talk. Yeah, but his mom let him talk. So we don't but, know who it is. Hey, how come he doesn't have one of those uh, voice changers? Well, he definitely needs one because yeah. he does sound too, he sounds like he's in his 20s yeah. or 30s. And uh, so... Uh, it doesn't make sense what he's saying that 
you know, okay, so I'm a 17 year old and I'm getting, uh, I'm in a Discord chat room. And I'm talking about some games. I'm or doing deconstructions of of different strategies. So we can, it has something to do with who knows what. And the all of a sudden you get a bunch of classified top secret documents about the relationship of Poland to Lithuania to to the and the Jewish Mossad stuff and now you feel like you're on top of the world Mount Everest really? Mount Everest Mount Everest, Mount Everest? Yeah. really even if I saw that stuff I wouldn't feel that way hey and uh, where's where's this Mount Everest coming from hello 1980 you would say oh like they're like I was on top of Mount Everest Today, we'd say something else. Help me out, trolls. I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm you just, might be right about that. That's a good catch. Just doesn't, fi- doesn't sound right. Yeah, you me. wouldn't be saying stuff that, you know, hey, welcome to the 70s, you know. Kind of thing. <laughs> it felt like I was on top of Mount Everest. It felt like I was above everyone else to some degree. And that um, I, I, would, I would be able to brag to some people that... I knew stuff that they didn't. But in the months that followed, the documents were shared well beyond that small chat group. The Post reporter also viewed video of the man identified as OG standing at a shooting range with a rifle yelling racial and anti-Semitic slurs before firing his weapon. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Let's throw that in. (laughs) Hey, you black Jew. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and why don't we see, why don't we have this video? This is dynamite stuff. We need this video. We got the kid. Yeah. yeah I'm have- still waiting for the manifesto from the shooter. Yeah, right. We're not Stand- seeing that either. Yeah, all right. Go Standing on. at a shooting range with a rifle, yelling racial and anti-Semitic <sighs> slurs before firing his weapon at a target. But when the story of the leaks mushroomed into an international mushroomed. crisis, the teen said... OG became alarmed. He says OG said goodbye to the group just a few days ago. He was just saying that this may be the last he ever sees of us, and he was thanking us for all the good times that we had together and hoping that everything would blow over. Is he going to kill himself? Is he going to blow himself up? So uh, do they have copies of these uh, this transcript, if no, you're saying that? We have not seen that. We have not seen that. Huh. You think it'd be easy to get? Uh, this is a dynamite report, by the way. <laughs> I think what ABC has gone above and beyond to give us great content. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Roberts. Martha, as you noted there, Jack Teixeira is a very low-ranking member of the armed services, yes. raising even yes. more, questions more questions about why he had such access to top-secret information. You know, Whit, he may not even have been approved to see what he allegedly copied. We just don't know that yet. But he was an IT specialist, meaning he may have worked on computers that had classified information. Yeah, he worked on computers that had... And I I think that that sounds like the perfect honeypot. Um, And yeah, then there's there's plenty of thinking out there that this need... Maybe not all of this, but some of this needed to come out... Some of it needs to be talked about because of the obvious poor situation in Ukraine, and we need to back out of that, and you know, we need to start preparing people for the fact that this is going to be another Afghanistan debacle. It's no good. And here's a, the final clip in this series. Mm. Hey, hey, Martha, we know it's early in the investigation, but what are you learning about what whether learning? the Pentagon will reassess who can see these kinds of classified documents in the future? Well, already today, the Secretary of Defense has ordered a review of who gets access to top secret documents and how that information is handled and contained. Wow. You'd think they'd have done that, as you pointed out. You know, maybe Chelsea Manning might have been the time to do that or no, no, no. No, This smells. Let's go to NBC. Let's see what uh, what they have over there. New information tonight about the Chinese spy balloon shot down earlier this year. The details coming from the classified documents allegedly leaked by 21-year-old National Guard Airman Jack Teixeira. I hadn't heard about this. There's balloon information that he's leaked now? Oh, now it's becoming more obvious that something is amiss. Because it, it does this, like, we've, we've dug ourselves into a bunch of different holes that we can't seem to get ourselves out of. Mm-hmm. So let's leak our own information so it, so we can always go, well, you know, yeah, it sounds like that from the front, from the, you know, what you're, what the f- uh, public facing mm. that doesn't look good. But, but as you can tell, back here and back in the back, We've already determined that this and that and the other thing. Mm. So it's, it looks like a cover your ass situation. 
That's very possible. I mean, this is our, these yeah. all seem to be cover your ass. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, sure, we got – and also burn a few bridges that you might want to burn. Yeah, let's see you if burn, we can... Let's burn the UN guy. <laughs> He's toast. Let's burn the Mossad <laughs> or yeah. not yeah. or whatever yeah. that's all about. We don't know for Good sure. Good point. Yeah, yeah there's but, some but burning let's here. Burn, let's burn this stupid Ukraine war that we're going broke sending stuff Could. over because we've got to start concentrating on China. How so about this? How about a consolidation of intelligence power? Because what you're not hearing here is CIA, uh, CIA is not getting burned. No, that's an interesting theory, too. I think, well, there could be, that could be involved. That could be part of it. All right, let's go. The Washington but I still Post. think this is a cover your ass moment. Oh, yeah. Was reports that Chinese spy balloon carried sensors and antennas and that the U.S. knew of up to four additional Chinese spy balloons. Oh. The paper also reporting on Taiwan's vulnerability to a Chinese attack, citing a Pentagon assessment that China would quickly gain air superiority if it invaded Taiwan. There are also new insights tonight into why the U.S. government didn't know for months that state secrets had been posted online. At issue, the limits on what kind of checks are done on the 1.3 million Americans with top secret security clearance. Critics say the government now can't keep track of all the people with access to sensitive information. Okay, all right. This is now this this is turning into something good because I have a feeling that all the exactly what you said, all these things we're hearing, they're not even in the documents. We haven't seen all we've seen is some maps of Ukraine, a couple we haven't seen any of this. Where is it? Where are these documents? Where are these hundreds of documents? Where are they? Where are they? I mean, if they were on Discord, they've been copied, they've been distributed everywhere. Where are, how come I have, why, why don't I have a copy? No, you probably should. So I'm thinking another thing here. And this was, I think this was brought up with some other situation we had. Where these were first released, at least started to get released, the good ones, uh, months ago. So they're getting released, and, mm-hmm. the, and the guys who are doing the planning for this whole scam, they're saying, okay, we got these released, we got that released, this guy's printing it. Let's see, wait until the news media catches it. A week goes by. Or, or, or maybe, it's just, maybe it's just bull No, well, no well, let me finish. Okay. So the week goes by, <laughs> planning to nobody plan. picks up on it. Another week goes by, nobody picks up on it. Another week goes by, nobody picks up on it. Nobody's picking up on what's going on. They freak out, and this is all, you know, this is, should have started a month ago because it's costing us money with the stuff we're sending to Ukraine. I think this whole thing was had to be blowed out by the uh, Intel people themselves because the news media was so lax <laughs> that they couldn't <laughs> catch this thing going on. Don't you think? Possible. I, I just, I, when you say planning department, I just, I just visualize these guys with Gantt charts on the wall. You know. <laughs> planning department, yeah. Plan, hello, a leaking planning department. Well, let's see. Uh, there's more uh, NBC here. He's just the latest 20-something accused of leaking. T- there's, there's a lot about 20-somethings, too. I'm hearing a lot about 20-somethings, young people, 20-somethings, 20-somethings, low level, low level. There's a lot, a lot of memes going on here from the mainstream. He's just the latest 20-something accused of leaking top secret information. Jack Teixeira's Wait. job is... <laughs> Wait. I know we're never going to get through these clips. I, I'm, I'm, I enjoy this so much. But wait. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> He's the latest? Yeah, exactly. 20-something? Who are the other ones? There you that go. That have been leaking top secret documents. I must have missed something. He's the... I don't remember this. Troll room? What other 20-somethings were involved in this? Back it up and listen yeah. to that little ditty again. He's just the latest 20-something accused of leaking top secret information. Uh, I mean, reality winner, maybe? But she was. she's now 50. That was so long ago. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Snowden wasn't 20-something. Well, maybe he was. No, I don't think so. I think it was in the thir- early 30s. Yeah, but 30s, that's, 10 years, that's 10 years ago. And that's 10 years ago. It's not the latest. So it's not the latest. It's a reemergence, you could say, maybe, but I don't think that it, that Snowden it applies to Snowden. Definitely doesn't apply to Assange. The guy's ninety. <laughs> oh, poor, poor. I mean, well, at well, least he looks ninety. Aaron poor Schwartz. Guy. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess you could say that. But what, how about this? Twenty somethings are a problem. We got to do something with them. Jack Teixeira's job as a cyber transport systems journeyman. Cyber transport systems journeyman. That now, means he, he took out the removable hard disks. 
Cyber That's transport. That's cyber transfer, and then you cyber, put a new disc in there. Cyber transport. But Journeyman, isn't Journeyman someone who who, who is a hired gun for something? No, Journeyman is, means a, a guy who is adept and is is highly qualified for a for a for a, a layer of of jobs. He's the journeyman. He's the guy who knows what he's, he's the guy who knows what he's doing. Hold on. No, historically speaking, a trained worker who is employed by someone else. Okay, but in in the labor force, it's a guy who knows what he's doing. He's a journeyman. Well, the book of knowledge is wrong. As opposed to a though. beginner or a new guy or whatever. Okay. You want well, to he's a or the cyber, boss. cyber transport. This is new. Cyber transport. Jack has a removable hard disk. Hmm. Job as a cyber transport systems journeyman, an IT worker systems. with access. No, transport systems. That means he worked on cars, trucks, <laughs> cars and trucks. Yeah. <laughs> He's a, he was a good guy when it came to automatic transmissions. I guarantee you there, there's men and women in our armed forces who are rolling their eyes at us right now and are already writing emails. And I can't wait to read them. Back to Shara's job as a cyber transport systems journeyman, an IT worker with access to secret systems, required that he was at least 17, hold a driver's license, and undergo 18 months of training. Well, that sounds good enough for, for security. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. That sounds good. Retired. That's the way to keep our secrets. Give it to 17-year-olds. Four-star General Barry McCaffrey. No question. He shouldn't have had even a remote access to that kind of information, uh, nor should the, the, the Air National Guard. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a compromise. But veteran intelligence experts say 1.3 million Americans have access to top-secret information. from mil- Now, now- it is my understanding that it's more like 3 million Americans. Here they come again with 1.3 million. I was thinking 10. Could even be that. Well, the classification, I don't know if it's top secret. But we always heard it was about 3 million top secret uh, class. People have top secret clearance. And they keep, th- NBC keeps throwing out this 1.3 million, but they can't keep track of them. Okay. Top secret information from military and government workers to outside contractors. And the military has always relied on 20 somethings. There it is again 20 somethings. So this is a hit job on the military, too. You stupid military, you can't rely on 20 somethings. It's the very youngest members of the service that have the skill sets and talents in cyber ah, and IT. Ah, there it is. Because only the twenty somethings can understand Discord. To become administrators <laughs> of their systems. Need to know is based on patriotism, trust, and threat of prosecution that you'll never disclose national secrets for the rest of your life or face possible prison time. Need to know and patriotism. I didn't can you measure patriotism? That's interesting. Um, and you know, I do I have no CBS clips. Just again tells me that some of this is CIA. Uh, you know, CIA throwing. This could the be military. a massive op. It could be CIA versus DIA. Well, mm-hmm. I don't think that that battle needs to be done in this manner. Which fun? But this is some sort of an. I mean, if it's some sort of if it's some sort of an op, which it looks like more and more as yeah. we deconstruct. Yeah. Uh, we have to figure out why. Well, and I think I'm going to stick with my theory, which is it's a cover your ass situation. They're going to burn a few people. So what? We got to stop this Ukraine war. We've got to deal with this and we got to deal with that. We got to let it be known that we've already, we knew about this all along. The Chinese <laughs> balloon was no surprise and all the other bull crap they can't seem to explain. All right, back to NBC. He's just the latest 20-something accused of leaking top-secret information. 23-year-old Chelsea Manning provided 700,000 documents to WikiLeaks. 23. There there it is. Here's your 23. So these are all dumb shits. Can't believe. They're not dumb shits. They're untrustworthy. There you go. 29-year-old Edward Snowden fled to Russia. Okay. There it is. Now we we understand. It's the 29-year-olds that the military employs. The military. It's partly hit job on DIA. In U.S. secrets. Jack Teixeira's job as a cyber transport systems journeyman, an IT worker with access to secret systems, required that he was at least 17, hold a driver's license, and... No, I, I think that... Did I just not play this clip? I'm sorry. Um, back to... Now, Hallie John... Now we get into a couple other issues. Because the big thing 
um, on Twitter, etc. Is this is uh, this is uh, to um, to uh, hurry along the uh, restrict act? And we kind of had that initial thinking as well because they were talking about, oh, it's on social media, social media. But now it's no longer on social media. Now it's on. Uh, the focus on Discord and private chats. NBC News is learning tonight that intel agencies are looking to change how they monitor chat rooms and social media online, according to multiple sources familiar with this. After that huge leak of sensitive Pentagon documents on Discord, apparently they're looking to expand now how many kinds of sites like this they watch after all of that classified information was exposed. It was mostly related to the war in Ukraine. The Pentagon really showing it does not want a repeat at all of these super sensitive documents just hanging out for maybe weeks without just hanging out what is that what is that hallie jackson hanging out she does that every so often with her Mm -hmm. presentation she does that little high voice kind of borderline squeal Mm -hmm. like limited hanging out The Pentagon really showing it does not want a repeat at all of these super sensitive documents just hanging out for maybe weeks without anybody noticing. NBC's Dan DeLuce is joining us now. So, Dan. They have this this, um, Discord chat sound going on in the background, which is, I think, meant to, uh, you know, to aggravate your nervous system for some reason. It's really bad. You are uh, among the team reporting on this. You, Carol Lee, others. What are the changes these intel agencies want to make here? Like, is this yeah, just a function changes. of getting more staff looking at places more like staff. Discord, other corners of the internet, etc.? Corners of the internet like those damn podcasts. Uh, yes, it is. And of course, uh, there's no guarantee. It's still really difficult, right? Right. And the problem is... Right. Right. What's really difficult, right? What is so difficult, right? You guys own the, own the wire you can look at anything you want. You've got room 204, whatever it was. You copy the internet in Utah. How difficult is it, right? Uh, yes, it is. And of course, uh, there's no guarantee. It's still really difficult, right? And the problem is these documents appeared in a pretty obscure corner of the internet. And What is this corner? Is it square? It, uh, <sighs> the internet the internet's a big square and there's a corner. <laughs> We're in, we're in the corner of the internet. And the problem is these documents appeared in a pretty obscure corner of the internet. And Discord, the social app where they first appeared, is known by cyber experts as a place where uh, you can kind of move illicit data. That it's a place where sometimes criminals put out malware or stolen data. So some critics are saying the U.S. should have been a little bit more vigilant. On the other hand, uh, we can't watch everything. So they're trying to now right. expand the number of sites they'll look at. They're also looking at restricting how many people get access to some of this classified information to try to reduce the risk. Restrict how many people get access to reduce the risk. Uh, I I, I think you're right. uh, At this point, it's just a thing. It's just the Discord server and the 20-somethings. And you can say whatever you want. Well, you know, we all know that that information was leaked out by the 20-somethings on the Discord in a corner of the Internet. You can just say it. We, haven't see, we have no proof of what they're saying. We have no proof. We have a, how, I've seen five, six images of maps that are folded. What have you seen? Have you seen more than that? Yeah, there's a lot more than that I've seen. What, what have you seen? There's just a bunch of documents. There's just a, a variety of just... You know, memos and other crazy stuff. It's just, there's a lot of stuff. I haven't haven't seen much of that. Eh, I'll send some to you. Don't. Whatever you do, don't. What about privacy Because I know you can't look at it. No. (laughs) Really? Really? You're going to out me like that? What about (laughs) privacy laws and how that plays a part in this? Because that's a factor here, too. Absolutely. This is good. Now they're talking about privacy laws. This is really interesting. Factor here, too. Absolutely. And uh, it's complicated. It's not so easy. You cannot uh, burst into a private chat room without probable cause. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. This is this is why they had to employ Bellingcat to get around the uh, the possibility that anyone says, hey, wait a minute. What are you guys doing in our private chat? You can't do that. Wait, well, I'm going to stop you there. Mm -hmm. Why? Why can't they do that? You can't spy on Americans. You're not spying on anybody. You're just going in and checking in a, in a pri- It's a chat room. It's on the internet. It's like it's there's a corner, no a corner, a corner of the internet. I don't care if it's a corner or if it's if it's a triangle. 
There is a, uh, there's no, what is that word they use? There's no expectation of privacy. It's the internet. (laughs) (laughs) Which is for porn. Absolutely. And uh, it's complicated. It's not so easy. You cannot uh, burst into a private chat room without bull probable crap. cause, uh, no matter what government bull crap. agents. It's bull crap. You are. So and I, just, wait, stop. I got another thought on this. Uh-huh. They're saying this because that's what a honeypot operation would do. Right. You'd say something like this, which is bull crap, because there's no expectation of privacy on the Internet, period. So you'd say something like what he just said. Well, you know, if you're in our private chat, you know, the IRC, maybe you'll be in there in their crazy room there. And uh, we can't do anything without a warrant. That's bull crap. He's just lying to sucker people, stupid people. There you go. Without probable cause, uh, no matter what government agency you are. So just like after 9-11, there's going to be this balance here where they try oh. to try to be vigilant, try to prevent this. Oh, OK. This gives a little bit of credence to the Restrict Act, also known as Patriot 2.0. Just like after 9-11. And we had the, you know, we had to have a balance there. We had to have a balance. Well, there may be some credence to that. I'm kind of liking that idea now. Where they try to try to be vigilant, try to prevent this, but there still has to be some kind of legal authority if you're looking at a private chat room, and these documents started out on a private chat room. So there is no easy solution here. I should also add, you know, this is kind of an unusual situation. This isn't like previous leaks, at least so far, right? You don't have, uh, if you have a whistleblower, they want to take their information to a meeting media outlet for example they want to broadcast it publicly so why would- <laughs> yeah because the media outlets will immediately broadcast it publicly no no that's that's not true you can't even look at it because you have clearance. Uh, if you have a whistleblower, they want to take their information to a media outlet, for example. They want to broadcast it publicly. So why would a whistleblower go to a private chat room where a really small group of people see it, right? And if you're a spy and you want to pass it to a foreign government, why would you go to a chat room where you don't know everyone in the room? So it's a very odd case. All that stuff that guy said is weird. That was really It's all weird. bull crap. Yeah. It's all part of the honeypot scheme. Okay, so let's break this down. How do, how did this work? What 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 is the what is happening here? What is the what do we think is the point? What is the official no agenda stance on this? I don't think we can have a, a unified stance on this, but I have my thesis, which is that this is a cover your ass moment. They're trying to make up for all this mainly for Ukraine, mainly for Ukraine, mainly for Ukraine, but also the balloon. Let's throw what else ever else we can throw in there to you know make up for lost time, Mm -hmm. and uh, and then let the you know take this kid and throw throw the book at him, burn a few people. Yeah, but you burn a few people, and you may be burning people you want to burn. That's possible too. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, the guys in Russia, perhaps if there is anybody that could have all been done, as you listen to this Bamford guy, he also mentions as a possibility exists that it was all just the signals guy that picked up all this information. There was no human type guys over in Russia giving us anything. Um, So uh, in the, uh, so I think this was the New York Times, photographs of some of the documents first appeared on Discord app channels focused on the Minecraft computer game. Which is, is that all 20, isn't that like 12 year olds? Is that still a thing? Yeah, yeah, it's a huge. And followers of a minor YouTube celebrity known as Wow Mao, according to Bellingcat and other online experts. Thanks, Bellingcat. The photograph, do- so that's your, that's your injection of the op right there, Bellingcat. The photograph documents then eventually made their way to the image board 4chan, then pro Russian Telegram channels and Twitter. The New York Times first reported on the documents last week. A former official said, quote, watching a public chat room is fair game, but law enforcement agencies don't have the legal authority to monitor a private online chat room without probable cause. This is calling for legislation. That, by the way, is bullcrap what they just said. This reminds me, I'm going to remind people of this little... I I want you to remind us, but I just want to say it's bullcrap but they want some kind of legislation by saying that. And it's not... Could be. Yeah, they definitely want you, of course. That's Restrict Act, probably. Well, the Restrict Act's really bad. Yeah. So (laughs) I want to remind people that in in TV dramas, and they've been doing this and they keep doing it, and we all should know that it's bullcrap, 
where the guy gets, hold it, keep the guy on the line. We're putting a trace on the call. <laughs> My absolute favorite bullcrap bit that said they're we, still using we, that scam. We, we need 15 modern... more seconds. Oh, it was only 27 seconds. Oh, we couldn't complete oh, the trace. Up. We couldn't complete the trace. <laughs> really? You watch those shows. They still doing that? They're still pulling that. It's bullcrap <laughs> because of the, in today's world, it's modern switches. They give you the number immediately. Uh, someone, so, yeah. someone gave this kid this information. Someone, I get the sense that someone did too, yeah. and they, they goaded him. Yeah, you know, and and I with because he I, looks like. Have you seen a picture of him not with his little mustache and beard, but have you seen his photo? He looks like a like a, a wimpy punk. He looks like he's twelve. Yeah, yeah, and he looks so naive. It's not even funny. Yeah, and it's like no, no, no. Something was something's more. Something's up, and there, he's going to get off on a technicality or something. He get discharged. No, no, no. Throw this, throw the book at this kid. Well, that reminds me, let's listen to some right-wing talkers in Tampa, Florida. Okay. This is the Mike and Mark show. Mike and Mark show, everybody. How you doing in the afternoon? Hero, scoundrel, or somewhere in the middle, go. Scoundrel. I mean, he's a, he's a criminal, and, and everybody knows he's a criminal. He's a 21-year-old criminal who, uh, you know, has put lives in jeopardy, has embarrassed the United States. I hope he rots in jail, but that- yet that's not. <laughs> well, these guys, I'm telling you, these guys, they can't look at the documents. Trust me. The Tucker Carlson sort of red meat, Marjorie Taylor Greene response. And I'm, I kind of think I'm one of them, but not on this one. And I'm just wondering, there, there's a, there's a, fa- I love this patriot virtue signaling they're doing. These two guys. I've never heard of Mark and Mike. Are they big? Yeah, Mike Gallagher is fairly famous as a talk show guy and Mark Miller. So I can't remember his last name, but they, they do it. This is like, you know, this is the typical local yokels and you know in this case they're do a combo show in the morning i'm sure it's a morning show it can't be afternoon mm. uh morning show in tampa no because we have that other fine uh product in the afternoon what is it what used to be limbaugh what is it now the the oh, bongino no 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 the two bongino guys Gino took limbo spot. no 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 those two guys took over no 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 yes well yes, at least yes. locally bongino took the spot um ah what are these guys' name? Buck. Buck Sexton. Buck's a nut. Uh, oh, Buck and Buck and Buck? Buck, Buck and <laughs> Buck and Duck. And it's ex CIA. Come on. Yeah, that's Clay, true. Clay, Tra- Clay, Clay Travis and Buck and Buck uh, Sexton. They took yeah. they, they took over the actual slot. Yeah, I think uh, the initial name was shows the two spooks. Was that right? Am I wrong or am I wrong about that? Two spooks. <laughs> two spooks, one cup. But not on this one. And I'm just wondering there, there's a there's a phenomenon called I call it contrarianism. Everybody's gotta be a contrarian. Everybody's gotta go the opposite way. We, we, Which is exactly what you're doing. <laughs> gotta be a contrarian. Everybody's gotta go the opposite way. We, we're so cynical of the government. And we and we should be. By the way, we should be. Mm-hmm. D- d- I don't believe a lot of what they're telling us. Mm-hmm. I don't isn't it it is peculiar peculiar that the New York Times was at this kid's doorstep before mm-hmm. the feds showed up. It is peculiar they had news camera crews hovering overhead and they managed to tap. Oh, wait a minute. Sh- They're doing my material here. What is this? Stop, 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 stop. Overhead and they managed to tap. Isn't that something? The, the stunning vi- video. They captured the arrest. Wait, yeah. so the whole, it stinks to high heaven. There's no question about it. But that doesn't change that we don't want to leak classified information that puts our troops and our people in harm's way. Two spooks, one honeypot is the uh, two spooks. One is the name of the show. <coughs> That'd be good. Uh, where's uh, you know? So that's what you're going to hear from some of these guys. We need this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forgot all about Whoopi. Is that Whoopi? Yeah, yeah. We have you have you have this. We have, remember this? I'll play this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play that end of show. I gotta play that. Oh, hold on. I gotta play that end of show. That's too good. Classified. I haven't played that in a long time. It's a nut job. She can do that again. She should pull out that classified. That when was it? When did that happen? Even like that classified I can't a long time ago. Um. So yeah. So I I, I think we have um we have uh something. Yeah. The, the Ukraine stuff was planted. We had to get that out because it's not going well. And uh, 
and we need to get some real information out there. So we can start kind of soft peddling and talking about it. Ukraine's not even in the news anymore. No one cares. It's all China, China and Trump. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Then it's just like, oh, man, what an opportunity. Well, let's just throw everything out there that we can. And let's burn some people. Let's burn. I like the burning of people. That's great. That, that really, that fits well. And then we have this story, which kind of comes in, in an odd way, you know, talking about Restrict Act. This is, uh, this is, a, this is a great little, uh, little side story here. Next tonight, Montana late today, becoming the first state in the U.S. to pass a bill banning TikTok on all personal devices. Yeah. The bill prohibits the popular <laughs> social media app from operating within the state. If signed by the governor, it would take effect in January. TikTok has suggested it will take legal action. The Biden administration has threatened a nationwide ban demanding TikTok's Chinese owners sell the company because of concerns China could access users' personal data. And in this, uh, in this Montana bill, they even say, well, if the company sells to a U.S. company, then it'll be okay. Uh, and I'm very curious how they want to do this. So they have to go to Apple and Google and they have to say Apple and Google. Uh, you cannot have your users in. I, I mean, is it people who are residents in Montana or only if you're in the geographic location of Ma- Montana? Uh, how I have would, no idea. And, and that kind of starts. I know you have no idea, but let's just think about it. I mean, how would that be enforceable? And that really starts off. I mean, oh, you know, this book, we've banned this book in Montana. Amazon, <laughs> make make sure no one can download it. I mean, and, and can you really, can you really enforce that? I think it's unenforceable. I, I would, I, I would agree. It's like a dead letter law right from the get go. What's a dead letter law? It's a law that's on the books, but nobody has ever enforced it. There's a lot of, tons of them. There's like kissing laws here and there and certain, from the 1800s and you they're on the books. You, you can't, can't kiss? kiss in public in some town, but. No. No, yeah. yeah. Oh, that might be in Fredericksburg. I'll have to check. There's, t- <laughs> <laughs> There's tons of laws against kissing in public that are on the books. Wow. And we're worried about LGBTQ. And we should <laughs> look at some of these laws. Wow. Hmm. Um, just on TikTok briefly, I was reading a... Um, I was reading a, an article from the, the Dutch press. It was, it was the Dutch, um, you know, the, the government press, NOS. And it's, you know, it's uh, the tourist season. Actually, it's a little early, but, you know, April, May, if you get the weather, it's beautiful in Amsterdam and beautiful in the Netherlands in general. Uh, it's really, it's a, it's a small window. It's like a car it's wash. It's tulips crop, right? Yeah, tulips. And every, it's, yeah, it's, it's just dynamite. Beautiful. I've been there during that time of year and yes. the tulips are everywhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. I went to the tulip festival. Uh, the Floriade. I guess. Yeah, that's what it is, Floriade. Um, So now there's a phenomenon taking place that people, there will be an hour-long wait, a queue, in front of a French fry stand because it went viral on TikTok. And people get in the line, and it it completely is self-perpetuating. Of course, like, hey, I want to get some French fries. Where should we go? Oh, let's look on TikTok. As we know, this is Google's big problem. This is one of the the reason for trying to get rid of them is because Google and uh, and Meta platforms, they're all losing big advertising money. And we have nothing but example after example of people in the advertising business or departments departments within their companies are saying, oh, yeah, we're allocating all our money to TikTok. Um, And so they, they, they search for it on TikTok. They see a cool video. And then, oh, oh, cool, we're going to go there. And then they go there and they say, oh, there's a line. Oh, look at the line. They tick-tock that on the line. <laughs> right. And, and they don't want to leave because there's people behind them in line. And you don't want to go home and, and people say, hey, you were in Holland. Did you go to that, that French fry stand? Oh, you didn't go to the one on TikTok? What kind of doofus are you? Uh, and these people, and, and this is without, you know, the, uh, look, uh, French fry stands don't really have a lot of marketing department tr- tradition. <laughs> And and it's creating big problems. It's creating problems for other retailers in the in the same neighborhood. These are on the little little streets in Amsterdam, and it's just a, an hour long queue for a French fry. So this TikTok thing of their algo, which we've discussed, is is very 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 popular and a big problem for 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 people who don't like it. I think it's great. And, and by the way, let's just talk briefly. I don't want to talk about Dylan Mulvaney, but we, I should think we should talk about. 
influencers and influence campaigns. Um, and, and this is exactly what I said this was. This was no spokes model. This was not a, a big, you know, D- Dylan Mulvaney is the, uh, you know, we're, we're hiring him as, a, you know, to be the face of our product. No, none of that. This is the influencer departments, which is very cheap way. And they use these influencers. Where's Mulvaney? Mulvaney's on TikTok. Okay, TikTok. So TikTok is, is where all the marketing is going. And you've got all these, you remember when I had uh, Think New Ideas, but I would have the biggest company, Reebok was a great example. Reebok, we built their website, planetreebok.com. I also built uh, Anheuser-Busch and you know, Bud, Budweiser.com, BudLight.com. But uh, they were a little more, they, you know, they, they didn't say the following, which Reebok did. Uh, yeah, we'd like you to build our website and uh, we'd like to have, you know, some reporting and we'd like to have the Human Rights Now Foundation information in there and, you know, and our sports, uh, our, our stars. And then, you know, we have Shaq, so we'd like you to do a chat with Shaq. And, we'd, and uh, you always would get this. We'd like you to create a viral video because they thought you could just create a viral video. And this was the mar- a very sophisticated marketing department who just didn't know anything about this the This still internet. goes on. Yeah, I'm sure it does. So now it's like... They, you know, so it was not this uh, VP of marketing um, who created this Mulvaney campaign. No, it was the influencer marketing department. And I think that this is going to be a, uh, a, a case study in the dangers of, of influencer marketing. And it's going to dry up. I think big brands are going to say, oh, crap, we saw what happened and we don't want that to happen to our brand. And it's going to come from the top down because the CEO who who issued a statement, which I, it wasn't an apology. It was just a statement like, hey, but man, he wasn't this. What? I understand. Well, Go this ahead. whole thing is so fishy. Mm-hmm. I'm almost of the opinion that this has been done on purpose. This woman and the guy, the ex CIA guy that was the CEO of a- a- Anheuser Busch, <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy is great. He came out of military intelligence, and he went to the CIA. Then he went to Pepsi, and he has a very interesting background. Good, you know, he's, he looks like a male model. You only see a few pictures of him. He's always got that big smile. He looks, you know, he just looks too good. Could not, you, we don't even know it's him. And uh, we have to realize that InBev, which is a Belgian, uh, Belgian multinational. Actually, it's Brazilian Belgian. Oh, I didn't and know that. And the CEO of InBev is Brazilian. I did not know this. And the uh, Anheuser Busch part of it was a hostile takeover. Correct. That the Bush family was not too happy about. They reversed back into the stock. That's why it's AB InBev on the on the. Yes, stock market. they did. But that was like they still aren't happy. They'd rather run this thing themselves. The Bush family's famous for their. They've been doing this in the eighteen hundreds, and they figure they can do it better than well, these but, guys. But Woody and this woman. Well, let me finish some little tidbits here. This woman who was the so-called VP of marketing. If you look up the wiki page. You'll find that she's actually the co-president with the CIA guy, at least for a while. And then she got downgraded. This whole thing stinks to high heaven. I think that, and she's in, there's pictures of her that were all suddenly leaked on the (laughs) Daily Caller (laughs) of her being an out and out (laughs) frat boy drunk, (laughs) a sorority chick, a Sally, floating around the the parties. Is Is that called a Sally? Sally's, yeah. Uh, it's an old term. From, uh, yeah, but the, yeah, she's a Sally hanging out with the frat boys, drinking too much with her friends, yeah. you know, whooping it up. And, you know, pre uh, Flickr, uh, the old actual 35, you know, which means they're real photographs, so somehow they got into the uh, oh. Daily Caller. Oh, so it couldn't wait. have been like. I thought, they were from, I thought they were from her Instagram. I don't know that. Yeah, well, but whatever the no, whatever the so. case, I don't think she has. A, I don't think not anymore. No one, <laughs> none of them have a LinkedIn or in, everyone's learning from this. Uh, I shouldn't have put my resume on LinkedIn. Said the CIA guy. Well, the whole thing is fishy, and I think it's. I think it may be a scheme to to like hurt. A B in Bev if they can. I don't know that they can to get that to to make them have to start selling off. They have so many properties. People yeah. think it's this and that. No, no, it's a lot. 
<laughs> uh, so boots on the ground inside. It's about a thousand beer companies. Boots on the ground insider from HQ AB InBev. Our boots on the ground producer says it's a crazy place to work right now. He knows the person in charge of the influencer campaigns. He's pretty sure that person's going to be fired. Alyssa Heinerscheid, also probably going to be fired. But she was not the one who greenlit this. It was done through the influencers campaign department. And there's a different VP for that. And what I hear, yes, it is hurting Anheuser-Busch. Because the, the, the way the beer business works, it's the distributors. And the distributors are seeing the... Uh, the the fallback in purchase. You know, distributorship of, of, of beer is a big deal to get one. And and, yeah. and the distributors kind of, they're the boss. They, yeah, they it's have a, a money maker. Say. They have a lot to say when it comes. You know, Frank Sinatra had a... Uh, it's a distributorship for beer and they're very exclusive you don't you there's not like competition because it's so no. mobbed up no <laughs> exactly. if you've got atlanta, hello, hello sinatra hello <laughs> yeah if you've got atlanta you've got atlanta Yeah, you own atlanta exactly exactly well that may be uh but i'm i don't know much about the mob you know it's more your territory uh thanks <laughs> But I, I have a feeling that influencer marketing is going to end with this. It's going to be dangerous. People are now going to see that you know you can't you can't have these nut jobs running around on TikTok promoting your product because inevitably you have no control over them. I I'm I'm telling you this is going to be big, and it's also going to be a problem for Silicon Valley because this is part of their business is the influencer marketing without without that demand who wants to be an influencer if you can't make money on it anymore we'll see okay i i mean i think it has i mean you could be totally right but i think it's just the selection process of picking some of these screwballs mm. uh like dylan mulvaney who are an embarrassment yeah yeah, it's super, super embarrassment. Okay, um, now did you I'll, see the latest thing from? Uh, please, please let's not talk about Mulvaney. It's got to be something. Well, else. I'm going to talk about. I mean, that's what I meant. Mm. Uh, the, what's his name? Uh, O'Keefe Media. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. See him tracking her down at the hotel. Him. You know, tracking it down at the hotel. Yeah, but I didn't even watch it. It's so. It's oh, I watched it. It was like a typical O'Keefe thing. There was no substance. What's the point? Just following somebody around with a microphone and sticking it in their face and telling them to say something is not no. really, I'm not impressed. Well, and I'm not impressed by O'Keefe for the same reason. It's all dumb. This is all blowing up in everybody's face. No one cares. Look, we have talked about O'Keefe. Seemed like a nice guy, but what has he really done for humanity? Seriously, name one Project Veritas um, reveal that has changed anything. One. Thank you. You can't. What is the one thing that Project Veritas did under O'Keefe's stewardship? That bu- ma- I busted Acorn. Uh, uh, that was the one thing. And, and, and what happened? Obama still was president for two terms. So it's in- yeah, it didn't do any good. Inconsequential. Um, let's talk about some more douchebags. So as predicted... Uh, Substack did indeed release a social network. It's called Substack Notes. I'm sure you've been invited to it. It's no, part, you're part of. You have the Oasis. You, you're not. You're, you're, it's getting blocked by your email server. Come on. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Must be. So notes. Notes. This is what Elon Musk accused uh, Substack of doing is uh, trying to scrape twitter somehow to get accounts for their social for their twitter clone it's not exactly a clone i'm not sure if it i mean it feels like twitter it looks like twitter it's a social network like twitter but when you follow someone you also get subscribed to their newsletter which is something that i'm not ah. interested in <laughs> like, i don't think that I, re- stinks. I don't really want maybe i'm not I, have under- to, I i don't know what it is but i they 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 substack randomly dis- uh, subscribes you to various newsletters you have to quit 
And it's like, why am I reading this? This guy sucks. He can't even write. Oh. And so you have to keep unsubscribing, and they keep doing they, this to me. No, when you unsubscribe, then they keep sending you emails. Well, here's another thing. I've uh, Since you're, talk, you're going to start talking about this, I will mention I did join a new social network. Nostril? It, no, I don't even know how to get into Nostril. <laughs> this one is like, it's like, uh, normally I'd go in with my, with my finger. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. So normally I think to some of the, you know, the Macedon spinoffs or the like Macedon.social and some of those yeah. main ones. Yeah, which sure. The worst, the worst sort of people. Yes. But they're all kind of, a lot of them are brand name worst sort of peoples. Yeah. Tribal. That sounds old. Isn't tribal really old? I don't know, but it's got the worst sort of people. Everybody in there is just a left wing nut job, although there's not like famous left wing nut jobs, mm-hmm. but everyone's in there. And it's like this one guy he keeps posting and every pre, every post he has, every link there, whatever it is, always starts with Republicans are rotten to the core. <laughs> yeah. That's every post. Tribal, man. I I don't think tribal. Uh, and not only that, but it's spelled weird. Is, what's not spelled T R I B A L? No, E L. Oh. oh, then it's something. I, then it's something I don't know about. Tribell, tribell dot com. Yeah, tribell, T R I B E L. I don't know that it's old. It's, it's new to me. I never heard of it. Hmm. No, but I, a tribal with an A. Uh huh. I don't know. Uh, what, 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 that other thing got sold. Um, Gab? Does, no, no, no. The the one that Kanye was going to buy. No, the one that Kanye was going to buy. Uh, uh, chatter? No, no. This, Slander? How, how, many of the, how many of these dumb things on there? All you need <laughs> one thing. You only need, you only need nostril, people. That's all you need. And you wait. They're going to go after that, too. Uh, you can blow it out your nose. Yeah, there you go. Ha, ha. Um, no, uh, so, so back to Substack. So Substack is now, it is a Twitter clone, it is a social network. So now we have to, uh, you know, there are rules. Do you know the rules? If you start a social network, John C. Dvorak, do you know the rules? Do you know what you have to have? You have to, you have have to mo- be kind. You have to be moderation. What? You need moderation. Oh, moderation. Yeah, absolutely. Safety team. Safety. Safety and standard. Oh, Excuse me, before I continue. So, and again, we've got all these clones of my Twitter, uh, my Twitter thing popping up uh, of me. So it's like, it'll be underscore, uh, at underscore Adam oh, Curry, yeah, underscore. People like, for some reason, they love cloning you. Well, and, uh, well, I think it's because I, uh, uh, I'm like a Bitcoin guy. And so then they'll, what they do is they copy my profile. They, they make a whole bunch of, uh, they copy a lot of my p- posts from the past month or so. And then uh, they start following people who follow my, my, uh, my, pro- my official profile. And then people go, oh, because people are surprisingly dumb. Uh, but, oh, oh, Adam's following me, knowing fully well that I'm not going to follow anybody. I don't follow many people. Like a couple hundred, which I subscribed to 15 years or 10 years ago. Um, and then, then Adam Curry, the at underscore Adam Curry underscore starts uh, DMing them. Hey, you know, uh, this is a backup account. Uh, so uh, I'm just following you to make sure that I've you know, got all my followers. And, you know, would you like to buy some uh, crypto? Oh, oh, I see what they're up to. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, I like it's, it. It's, it's a confidence creative. It's, a, it's so creative. It's a confidence game, con game. And yeah, con game. So, so people start telling me this and then, you know, and of course uh, I'm blocked from these accounts. So I report the account and, and it used to be, well, they tried it again. Like, well, okay. Um, if there's impersonating you upload your government ID. And I said, look, I've done this. I'm not going to keep uploading my government ID to you. No, um, this is me. I have 91,000 followers. This is me. This is not me. And they're copying my profile. And now what you get back is, now we've looked at it. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, you know, this is not impersonation. Twitter says this is not impersonation. No wonder you hate Elon Musk. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really care. It's just surprising. It's just here, Twitter support impersonation. 
of underscore at Adam Curry underscore. Um, I will read it to you. We've investigated the reported account and determined it is not in violation of Twitter's misleading and deceptive identities policy. What? It's totally misleading. In order for an account to be in violation of the policy, it must portray another person or business in a misleading or deceptive manner. (laughs) For more information, please make sure to read and understand our full policy. We appreciate your help and encourage you to reach out again in the future if you see potential violations. Please note, any documents you may have uploaded will be deleted, which I did not upload. So So they didn't even do any. This is a bot. Yeah, it was a total bot. Yeah, yeah. So they don't even have the, well, they look at the numbers, say, oh, you're under 100,000. Oh, gives a shit. <laughs> hey, this guy's bitching and moaning about being caught. Let me see. He's a, he's a, cause if he had a million, yeah, maybe, but no, 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 no. Hey, Screw it, him. We don't have time for this bull crap. Dude, so what? That's what they're thinking. That's I'm being in the office. So what? Yeah, well, you know, I don't have a blue check mark, so I get, uh, I'm. Yeah, you not. don't have the blue check mark, so so what? Sir Andrew Gardner checks in. I was one of those Air Force veterans that was rolling my eyes at you and John thinking a journeyman was someone knowledgeable. Here we go. This is boots on the ground in real time. The Air Force job codes known as Air Force specialty codes have a skill level signifier that uses one, three, five, seven, and nine. I do not believe one is ever actually used. Three is someone right out of their initial technical training school. And then after some tests and further learning, job specific determines how much, one gets their five level. So a journeyman is just someone that has been on the job for a little and completed the minimal task needed. That may be in the military. I was explaining journeyman in the normal world. No, it's, it's, it's not a slam against you. It was explaining this kid had no business seeing anything. No, the, well, that's, I think we've, okay. he doesn't know that we, that's what we said. Well, he rolled his eyes and, hey, come on. Thank you, is what you say. Thanks. Just Yeah, thanks. thanks for nothing. <laughs> so back to uh, Substack. I'm trying to get to this one clip. So yeah, if, Boy, if, you're taking forever. <laughs> if you're Substack and you're starting a social network, well, you know, you have to talk to Neelai Patel from The Verge, and Neelai Patel is going to call you to account. I'm going to call you on the mat, CEO guy. I, you know, Neelai Patel was on the show that Leo railroaded me into saying the moon landing was fake. Or that I didn't believe in it. I never said it was fake. I said, no, I, I have a hard time believing it. I have no proof it actually happened. And Neelai Patel was on that show. So I, I don't like him. Just disclosure. Oh, I don't like him either. I was in a show with him over there, and he called me a racist. Oh, well, you could be the CEO of Substack then. Yeah, I just want to be clear. If somebody shows up on Substack and says all brown people are animals and they shouldn't be allowed in America, you're going to censor that. So we do have a terms of service that... that you know, have narrowly... Please note, by the way, the so-called journalist saying, you're going to censor that, aren't you? Yeah, Abuse I love it. journalists who are into censorship. That's right. Yeah, I just and he's a lawyer, too. Be clear, if somebody shows up on Substack and says all brown people are animals and they shouldn't be allowed in America, you're going to censor that. So we do have a terms of service that... that you know, have narrowly prescribed, uh, you know, things that are not allowed. There's, there are extreme cases, right? And I'm not going to get into like the... Wait, hold on. In America 2023, is that? that is not so extreme, right? We should not allow as many brown people in the country. Not so extreme. Do you allow that on Substack? Would you allow that on Substack notes? I think the, like... The way that we think about this is we want to put the writers and the readers in charge. No, I, I really right. want you to answer that question. I'm not going to get into gotcha you, content moderation. This questions. is not a gotcha. I'm a brown person. Do you think people on Substack <laughs> should say I should get kicked out of the country? Well, I, I, yeah, you want to say something? Uh, I'm, a brown person. I'm a brown person. I'm a brown person. He's Indian, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Is he Indian? I believe. Well, he could be Bangladeshi. He could be, uh, He's a brown he could be Pakistani. I'm not sure. Hey, I went to Jamaica. I'll look him up. I'm a brown person. I'm not going to get into gotcha you, content moderation. This questions. is not a gotcha. I'm a brown person. Do you think people on Substack should say I should get kicked out of the country? I'm not going to engage in. I'd say yes, you know, but con- not because you're a brown person. <laughs> Do you think people on Substack should say I should get kicked out of the country? I'm not going to engage in. You know, content moderation, would you or want you this or that? Content Why? moderation questions. But it's the thing that you have to do, right? I mean, you have to make these decisions, don't you? The way that we think about this is yes, there is going to be a terms of service. We are going to have, you know, uh, uh, we have 
content policies that are deliberately tuned to allow lots of things that we disagree with, that we you know strongly disagree with. We think we have a strong commitment to freedom of speech, freedom of the press. We think these are you know essential ingredients in a free society. We think that it would be a failure for us to build a new kind of network that can't support those ideals and we want to design the network in a way where people are in control of their experience where they're able to do that stuff by the way uh, 30 more seconds this guy is a fail I mean, oh I, I agree 100 percent. i don't know what he was thinking um i don't i don't i don't know what he was thinking in general that you can in today's climate with journalists uh, and, you know, the, Twitter was the journalists owned it. Journalists, journalists, or Bob, we control Twitter. But to think well, that I'll you tell you this much. I'm looking at his uh, wiki page, uh, Nil- Nilay. Nilay Patel. Uh, if this guy's not a spook, I don't know who is. Oh, interesting. And, and I'll say that because it's one of those wiki where there's nothing on there. There's no information whatsoever. Just a bunch of random little things. Mm. You know, it's one of those, what do we do with this guy? I don't know. Oh, so but he's so he's actually vying for a consultantship to help uh, censor when he gets the information from, That's uh, what it from the government. Like. Okay, all right. But this poor um, K- Chris uh, Chris guy, he was really he bit off more than he can chew with this thing. We're at the very early innings of that. We don't have all the answers for how those things will work. We are making a new thing, and we are you know. Literally, we launched this thing one day ago. Oh, bad answer. We're going to have to figure a lot of this stuff out. Uh, I don't think it's... You have to figure that. You, you have to figure out, should we allow overt racism on subsect notes? You have to figure that out. No, I'm not going to engage in contact. <laughs> you know this is a very because, bad response to this question, right? You're, you're aware that you've, you've blundered into this. You should just say no. And I'm, I'm wondering what's keeping you from just saying no. What a dick. What a dick. He should do a show, a podcast with Kara Swisher. They would be great together. Well, actually, if you look at the wiki page, there's a connection between the two of them. She did a special on him oh. or an article. Oh. Okay. Well, Neelay Patel, no longer managing editor of The Verge, moves to Vox.com. Oh, I thought he was with The Verge. Well, I think he's back with The Verge. I don't know what he is anymore. Now he's with, uh, mm. yeah, he's back with The Verge. Mm. Well, that's Or he has been. It's hard to say. That's interesting. I'm telling, like I said, this thing is so vague. This this wiki page is is like useless. He's a brown person posing as a journalist mm. in America. Mm. Yeah, and it says very carefully in black, so you can't click on it. Nationality? What do you think his nationality is? By Indian, American. Oh, that was my faux pas. Yes, of course. I'm sure he's American. No, it says right there, American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was my that was me being racist. Obviously. We don't know where his par- who his parents are. We don't know where he was born. We don't know anything, which is one of those those entries that is like problematic. Mm, I, and know, I use the I, word advisedly. I'm going to talk to my guy. My guy knows. My guy can get to. I got some Indian uh, mafia friends. Oh, well, they'll know. Yeah, oh yeah, and, and you know, and they hate these kind of posers. They don't like these guys at all, and it's tech guys too tech guys mm, interesting huh. uh well let's let's just finish up the tech bashing and and i just want to say that john <laughs> and i the, the reason why we scoff at these things so easily is we've been around we have seen things come and go we have seen the hype the overhype the things that just fall apart i think we have i mean we don't always get it right but at least we couch it in in language like there's no evidence but in general, <laughs> in general, we we have, we have seen things. Come, I mean, did you ever think OS two would work? That it would be a big a big seller? I was hoping it was. I me had a too, book on me it. Me too. I liked it too. But did you really? And it think was a it good would? product. But did you really think it would work? Well, IBM was a bunch of of uh, see exactly. We know how it operates. IBM was not up to it. No. No. At all. And then they had that moment at one of the big shows, one of the big trade shows, that they came out with a version of OS2 that was uncrashable. Oh, it can't oh, it, be crashed. That, was that Warp? OS2 Warp? It may have been Warp. I love Warp. They, uh, and Rex, then so Rex, Steve Ballmer. Rex, Rex. I've got a program in Rex. Rex was actually a pretty good little system. Yes, it was a nice little scripting language. It was like a lot better than uh, Batch. <laughs> so, uh, or AppleScript. 
<laughs> so uh, Steve Ballmer came in with a with a disc, with a floppy disc, uh, with some code on it. And he went into the IBM booth. He says, this thing won't crash, huh? And he says, let's see what, they, how, what it does with this disc. He sticks the disc and it crashes. <laughs> with a bunch of people around him so they could all write, about, write it up. Oh, it was journalists around him? Yeah, I think I think it. He made a big fuss about it. Yeah, it was kind of the idea was. Oh, it won't crash. Well, look, it just crashed. You guys suck. <laughs> the idea Which was- is funny because I uh, the original OS two was partnered with Microsoft, yeah. and they were partners for OS two. And I have a little. Uh, uh, I still have a little pin, a, a lapel pin that says Microsoft OS two. Wow. Another collector's item that's going to go on the uh, Etsy site for sale. How is that doing? You, do you still have stuff on your Etsy site for sale? Well, we're trying to re- re- reincorporate new stuff. Oh, Jay. Okay, you're making Jay work. Okay, got it. Do I? Yeah, and she's <laughs> like, oh, I hate the Etsy site. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about AI because uh, another day, another 20 stories about how AI is going to kill us all. And I'm, I'm a little tired of it, to be honest. Um, by the way, just to reiterate, there's no business model for AI. No one wants to pay for it. It, it uses more energy than Bitcoin yeah. and water, by the way. Molly Wood wrote about this. Chat GPT is consuming a staggering amount of water. I guess, I guess the cool stuff. Uh, but uh, Chat GPT really uses a lot of energy. And a lot of GPUs and, you know, and, and it's, and for what? For what? So um, Deutsche Welle had a long, um, tedious interview with an MIT professor, uh, Max Tegmark. Max Tegmark. And, and this guy was all jacked and jitty because all you hear, anyone who's in the AI space, I think is- Space. Yes. I think is really, they're- I mean, how many times have we seen this type of hype? You know what I mean? But, oh, oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. It's almost like we've seen the pod, video podcast, video podcast, video podcast. Now we've been through this cycle. Podcasters will be audio podcasters. Video podcasters is on YouTube. That's just YouTube shows or Rumble or whatever. It's not the same thing. Rumble. <laughs> will you agree with me? We've seen these cycles. Oh, 10 times over. Like social networks. I, th- I think we're kind of done now. You know, Facebook. Well, blogs. Remember the blog phenomenon? Blogs. Oh, everyone had to have a blog. It was going to free the universe. Everyone's going to have their own blog. We're going to have citizen journalists. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Citizen journalists. But also, I mean, like I've said for the past 10 years, that Facebook can also go away. Facebook can fall out of favor. And to a degree, it has. And it fell out of favor to Instagram. They bought Instagram. And Instagram fell out of favor for TikTok. This is the cycle of life in technology. The co- you know, companies don't like to go. So anyway, now we have this new thing, which, let's be honest, it popped up. And it was like a fluke because someone started using chat GPT, which chat GPT. And then everybody had to have chat GPT because they know, uh oh, this is the hot new thing. As is witnessed by Google, who are pretty careful with how they roll products, how they roll out products. They have a bad track record, but they were even open about how flimsy this really was. And they come out with barf, and then the thing, you know, screws up so bad they lose uh, 100 billion in market cap on the first day because people are like, oh crap, Google can't figure this out. So now they're throwing all kinds of money at it. They're rejiggering their finances to make sure that they can throw the money at it without a business model. So long lead in to this, to this douche who was interviewing the MIT douche about chat GPT. This is not science fiction. Intelligence is not something mysterious. This, this, by the way, it's a style piece. This is the, uh, the MIT professor 
uh, Max Tegmark. This is not science fiction. Intelligence is not something mysterious that can only exist in human brains. It's something we can also build. So we were basically building these alien minds that are much smarter than us, who we're going to have to share the planet with, right? And the pessimism is because yeah. basically everybody who's driving the race towards this cliff is in denial about there even being a cliff, but they can't stop. No company can pause a loan because they're just going to have the lunch, their lunch eaten by the competition and get killed by their shareholders. Lunch. Otherwise, we, there might simply not be, be any humans on the planet at all. This is not an arms race. It's a suicide race. Oh. Billions of dollars are pouring into artificial intelligence, but are private companies putting the world in danger in a race to create better, even so-called godlike artificial intelligence? Well, my guest today is Max Tegmark. He's a Swedish-American physicist, cosmologist, and machine learning researcher. He's a professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the scientific director of the Foundational Questions Institute. Max, welcome to the show. I want to be a, begin with a general question before we really launch into the specifics, and I'd ask you to be as brief as possible with your answer, as much as you can. And that question is, are a handful of companies leading us down a dangerous path? Yes. <laughs> So <laughs> that was the punchline. That was his punchline, and then he literally stopped because, of course, you know, as I said, the interview is long and tedious. And but guy, we don't want to hear the interview then. But I have one other. Po- I have one he other said clip. yes, but he said it with a thick accent because he's a Swedish uh, Swedish American. Yes, yes, yes. But you heard him yes. in the beginning. That's him saying we intelligence is not just for human beings. I just like to when you talk about artificial, it's fake. Artificial meat. Um, artificial leather, um, artificial, um, give me some other artificials in our life. Everyone understands artificial is not real. It's not the real thing. There is no intelligence. Artificial breasts. Uh, Thank you, artificial... That's well, not a great example because that has. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd say have something. You said stop That's ya. not a great example. <laughs> so, but now he's going to tell us why we're all going to die. It's a suicide race. Um, billions of dollars are being poured into it because that's really what this is about. No one can stop. Everybody has to participate. Even though it's just, they are raising money with this suicide race thing. And now listen to how he justifies and tells us what we actually have achieved today. How much of a breakthrough are these new generative AI models like ChatGPT? It's uh, what looks like a breakthrough in the media is really a quite steady progress on work on AI. It's been happening for a long time. You know, in the, in the 60s, the, the term artificial intelligence was coined by an MIT professor. And uh, <clears throat> for a long time, the people realized, man, this is much harder than we thought. And uh, the, gradually, the list of things, though, that, that humans can do, the machines cannot, was gotten shorter and shorter. And uh, one of the holy grails that Alan Turing famously called the Turing test is being able to talk like a human, really master language and that's no. the big breakthrough we've seen now manifested in, in gpt4 and, and tools like this thank you i was i was hoping that you would say that is not what the Turing test is and before you say anything he works at the massachusetts institute of technology he is a professor in this field he said that the Turing test was a machine that could talk yep you know like Computer, computer, working, working. I mean, that's, you know, the Turing test is the point where you would have a exchange with a computer that you wouldn't be able to tell if it was a computer or a person. So I go into a chat room and I start a chat of, by typing. The Turing test was not involved with talking, but it, would, it could be the same, could be talking. And you would be chatting with it in one way or another. And you would not be able to tell yes. under any circumstances that this that's, was a machine. That's the answer. That is the that's correct answer. That's the Turing answer. test. That's the Turing test. It's not just a machine talking, working, working. <laughs> let's, let's just listen again to what he said here. <clears throat> For a long time, the people realized, man, this is much harder than we thought. And uh, gradually, the list of things, though, that... that humans can do the machines cannot it's gotten shorter and shorter and uh, one of the holy grails alan turing famously called the turing test is being able to talk like a human really 
master language. And that's the big breakthrough we've seen. So he's saying that the big, forget the Turing test definition. He says the big breakthrough is that it can talk like a human being. I'm not convinced that this has been achieved. Oh, I'm with you on that. I mean, it, it, I don't know how many people are convinced. I'm not. It's not even close. I mean, I, I, I see big flowery sentences and just going on and on. I mean, anyone who talks like that and be like, I don't like I don't want to talk to you. You're not you're not normal. And but for some reason and 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 also, you, is it just talking like a human being or do you also have to make sense and be somewhat correct? It, it does, would that be a part of the of the Turing test? Or just be able to fool well, the someone. Turing test. Going back to the real Turing test, that means you can't tell if it's a person. Or, right. I mean, if if you if you could presuppose that the that the person you're talking to is a moron, uh, <laughs> I ma- suppose the Turing test would be a lot more liberal in the way you interpret it. Can the Turing test speak uh, multiple languages like I can? Well, it, that was never included in the no, test. No, but I'm just but, I'm just curious. Does it is it does the Turing test have to work in all languages? So it would be German. I would think so. I don't think it can do any other languages. Yet. No, but seriously, think about it. All, the internet is predominant. They have enough trouble tr- translating, you know, when you <laughs> yes. go to a French translation <laughs> yes. through Google or one of yes. these guys. Yes. They still, when you say, I'm going to buy some Chateau Lafitte, they change it to Castle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> castle. You want to buy some Castle Lafitte. Castle Lafitte. So it's like, whoa, 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 this isn't what this even in we call it Chateau Lafitte because that's what it is. It's not Castle Lafitte because that's the translation of the word Chateau. So, I mean, you do, they don't even know that much. Right. So is this just a continue with your complaining, please? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. So, would you do you think that this is really just a, a Hail Mary and that the technology business is in deep trouble. Um, you know, Silicon Valley Ooh. Bank ruined all of the. You know, they, they got all of the the money went away, or the scam of um, uh, the venture capital scam, which now we understand how that works. Well, it's a cycle. The venture capital scam is a cycle. Well, but the scam of of creating money by by making everybody put their money in the same bank so basically the bank had three times the billion dollars oh that was you know that was was, i think that's fairly recent that's pretty new that's a pretty that's a good one but that was pretty new um but they they need to have something and and i don't they need to right they always need to have some gimmicky thing that gets a lot of attention this happened in the 80s with the artificial intelligence bullshit it happened and the fourth generation computer we had podcasts podcast oh hot 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 podcast then it was juiced Oh, you got to be like juiced. Uh, juice. You, you keep bringing juiced back up. <laughs> Irritates me. It was like juiced. And then you have and just Skype. We have to, everyone has to be Skype. We got to be, oh, it's going to be IP, uh, IP, VoIP. Well, VoIP, 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 VoIP. What other ones that we have? What other great? SIP, S-I-P, SIP. SIP. <laughs> but more My general, favorite. more general, more general. Then we had social media. Uh, but I think, you know. Blogging? Blog, I said well, that already. Bl- blogging, yeah, for a little bit there. But blogging was more an acquisition target. It wasn't really something that people, that VC put their money in. Oh, well, one of the big ones right now is um, uh, personal drones that you fly. You know, the like the Jetson 1 uh, and all these uh, all these these nutty uh, new flying contraptions. Ah, oh, yes, we're going to have uh, air taxis, air taxis everywhere. I, there, there must oh, yeah. be a hundred, yeah, a hundred. Well, companies. that is a, that's another uh, cycle that goes way back. Yeah, flying uh, machines. Yeah, flying it goes machines. back to the back to the seventies. The first time I ran into some guy in Sacramento had this flying machine, this <laughs> flying car. Yeah, and he would go out of you know, and nothing would happen. He get some money, and then twenty years later, there he was again, same guy. As we talked about in the last show, Segway, the Segway was was one of those things. Oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, the Segway is going to change the way we design cities, and and they have to create their own hype. And they've done it. They've done it to a crazy degree with chat GPT. Crazy degree. And then, you know, and I think there's no more, there's no more exits in, uh, in, in green, green stuff. They're trying to oh, do the it. green stuff was always a disaster. Yeah. I remember that Kleiner Perkins tried to do their green tech and they lost all, I think everything. They, I don't know. They had a green fund that made a nickel. 
No, I don't. They, they had one, but I don't think it made a nickel. Right. I think they had more than one. They couldn't even do the uh, the electric car right. They did the um, what was that thing that kept uh, catching fire? Yeah. What was that? Could be any car. <laughs> no, but they were early. <laughs> they were early on the burning up stuff. It was um, ah, come on. It was that, there was that really expensive one, the Fisker. High- Fisker, thank you, Fisker. Yeah. And then they tried the scooters. That was going to be another one. They all invested in scooters. And the oh, they had at the Kleiner Perkins offices, they all had a Segway in their offices on a charger. Yeah. <laughs> they all Remember that? Around. Yeah, of course I do. They're all riding around. And then uh, what else? I mean, there was um, DVRs. That was another one with, with the one hit, the TiVo. TiVo? TiVo? Well, there was, I think Kleiner was into replay TV. Right. Yeah, they got so the there loser. were two of them. There was Replay TV <laughs> and Tivo. and the Replay TV guy. It's kind of interesting. I had lunch with him once after he started Roku, mm. and he's a Roku guy. Oh. And he, oh, okay, something of a genius. He's the one who really invented the idea, and I think he felt he was stiffed on mm. the Replay TV because TiVo got all the attention, and they ended up being the big money maker. And Replay TV did just disappear, and he yeah. went off. Because I brought something up to him, and he was he got he mad. Just turned got from mad. a nice lunch to a, like I'm. <laughs> John, it took about ten minutes for him to calm down. John, have you ever noticed this is kind of what you do with people? It's it's <laughs> kind of what you do. I'm just saying. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your courage in the morning to the to you, the man who put the C in the bull crap chat GPT, ladies and gentlemen. Please say hello to my friend on the other end, Mr. John C. Devore. Wow. In the morning to you, Mr. Adam Curry. Also in the morning to all ships and sea, boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, and all the dames and knights out there. Yes, in the morning to the trolls in the troll room who have been somewhat helpful today, actually. Joke Let's count them morning, real quick before they start scurrying away. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. 2309. I think that's good for, uh, for a Sunday. Yeah, that's good. It's 100 over. That's 100, average. 100 over. 100 over. And only one donation segment today. Uh, it will be somewhat. It was, it was short. Weird. Um, well, anyway, that's fine. Um, it's value for value, uh, trolls. So everyone's sitting in there, run, scurrying away, running away. Uh, you get the show for free. There's no charge. It's not behind a paywall. We don't, you don't have to sit through advertisements, which means we don't have to have um, any type of uh, meetings with advertisers, which is good, which also means if we talk about a product because we like it, we actually like it. If we don't, then we don't like it or we don't talk about it because we don't care. Um, uh, there's no subscription, no, no Patreon. No, if you get value from this podcast, send it back. Time, talent, yeah, treasure. We don't do special episodes for these. For Pre- the premium uh, content, premium, premium content. <laughs> Premium. I love premium. So what you're listening to now is sub- worst idea ever. <laughs> Subpar. No, but you can have premium content. That's really what you want. Yeah, that's where it's going. Um, the trolls, uh, they hang out at trollroom.io where you can listen to the show live on Thursdays and Sundays. That's the no agenda uh, stream, which runs 24 hours a day. And there's always a podcast being done live. Oh, oh, there's always a pod. It's the best podcast network in the universe. Uh, again, no commercials or anything like that. Uh, you can log into the chat room. You can, you can, uh, if it's a live show, you can boost along, do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, you can also get this in a, in a podcast app. We have, we have redesigned uh, podcasting. Uh, with a, with a, like 30 new features, but the one that we love the most because we've been doing these live shows for almost 15 years is you get um, a podcast addict, podcast guru, a podverse, a curio caster. And right where you get your podcast, you can import it from your legacy podcast app. It works with all other old podcasts. When we go live, it's right there in the same app. You don't have to be struggling with a web page. You use it right in the app. You got the chat room and you got the stream all live. And uh, that's one way you can uh, you can hang out with us. You can also follow Adam at uh, noagendasocial.com. We have a Mastodon. We should probably get a, a tribal account just to be with all the hip kids. And I maybe- actually, the tribal account I open is No Agenda Show. Oh, very good. And do you have a Discord? Because, you know, that's where all the 20-somethings hang out. Not yet. Okay. Um and uh, it's John C. Dvorak at noagendasocial.com. That is, you know, John and I are there and lots of people are there. Also the artists, which I wanted to talk about one of our artists in particular. because oh, some, yeah, Roundy. Well, I, this is kind of beautiful. Roger Roundy, 
uh, and he's been posting on noagendasocial.com. He, uh, he said that he has now been hired by the Daily Caller to do political um, uh, illustrations, and, he's, and he attributes um, his, his job, uh, getting this job, to his work for the No Agenda Show. Yeah, he does. Then he bails out on us. He's not. <laughs> he quits. He didn't quit. He's he's still listening. He's still on No Agenda Social. We don't know that. He said Isn't so. Isn't Daily Caller is that the Tucker or is that Tucker Shapiro? Tucker. Tucker. He said he Tucker. he said he wasn't leaving the show in any any way. But you know what? No, he's, I, I, the note I said says, fuck you guys, right at the end of the note. <laughs> John. No, John, I read something no, else? no, you must have read. You're on tribal. Uh, hmm. I, and I wanted to say that he is incorrect. The reason why he got this job is not because he won many different pieces of art as album art, which we, we see as an award for an artist. The reason why he got this job is because of our criticism of the things that we didn't choose of his. No, I, I agree 100%. It was listening to the two art directors, that would be you and me Correct. as part-time art directors, mm-hmm. listening to us go over the art, and it, 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 it's something that most artists never get to hear. That's right. You don't get criticism. We say You don't is- know why your art was rejected. Correct. And, this, and so, once again... We can, I believe that what you said is true. We can credit uh, another success story to us. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with Pat that. Pat myself theory. on the back for that. Um, it's as well you do. <laughs> we want, <laughs> all the time, we want to thank, uh, I think, brand new to the lineup, Francisco Scaramanga. Yeah, well, he's been submitting he's been before. He's, he's been submitting, yes. We but, want to, and, they're, and they're always interesting. Yes, and he just hasn't quite made it yet for a number of reasons. You have to go back and listen to the criticisms we had. But he was, uh, mm-hmm. we, we picked his art for episode... Uh, 1546, appropriately titled Cat Hole, which the Dutch, John, I mean, you are the hero of the Dutch uh, No Agenda contingent. <laughs> they think your translation of Kat's Hoefel into Cat Hole. <laughs> I saw you got a, a postcard from Cat Hole. Yeah, I used it in the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> There's something incredibly funny about that. Uh, you have to speak Dutch to understand it, but it's, it's really, it's very well done. We like that. Well, the piece I liked in competition was the one from Nestworks. It could have won again with the SS Climate Change. It was very close. Yeah, it was very close. And it's, and actually, the SS Climate Change is a little more artistic, but it was less a, less connected to the show than the, the, our Maoist theme. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so this this the Scaramanga piece was just what we want, what the doctor ordered. And it was cute. And he does did a lot of stuff, and he came in second, you know, like the week before, with the go go back with the rabbit and, and the Christ figure. <laughs> that was a bit much, which was sacrilegious as hell. <laughs> decided not to and, do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. He had other good ideas. In yeah, the so Nestwork, I agree. Nestworks had the, and this is what happens sometimes. I mean, he had a, a great piece of art, but it just didn't quite fit in with the fish flopping. Now, other people tried Miami Fish, you know, other things, um, which, yeah, didn't hit the mark either. Um, who was this? Uh, Titter, which is also Scaramanga. So he's, he's been trying a couple of things. I kind of like Boyce Vert's uh, printing uh, steak. Did well, uh, Darren O'Neill had a nice printing food piece, too. Which one was that? Oh, yeah. He, yeah, I thought it was too complicated. It was too complicated. It was that was also small. You got Gitmo yeah. thirty three is the brand yeah. name of the machine. Too was, small. You can't too see small. it. Yeah. Um I don't think there was anything else that really that really hit the mark that even or came close. You know, uh comic strip blogger. No, no but this time. He had an Ozempic shot going into someone's belly. No, it was just creepy. Um no, it was nothing. We had this, this piece was a good else. piece. It, it looks good. Yeah. It worked. It worked. So, congratulations, uh, Francisco Scaramanga. And uh, oh, and you know what? I wanted to mention this. He has his own luckytownthreads.com, dot com, which is uh, he's got uh, he's got merch. He makes T shirts with uh, Sin City. What am I seeing here? Wax addict He's got a lot of t-shirts, a lot of yeah, t-shirts. suggestive t-shirts. Yes, backdoor cover. I mean, yeah, 
Lucky Town Threads. I thought that was interesting. So he definitely has, has artistic chops. He does like sports, sports t-shirts and stuff. So it was kind of cool. Um, and uh, thank you very much for bringing us the artwork for episode 1546. That was, that was really good. We thank all of our artists, of course. You can uh, join their ranks of congratulating each other, which they do begrudgingly. Some I think are sincere, but I, you can see what they're That guy won again. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, anybody can win, except uh, a comic strip blogger with his AI-generated art. We, we just, uh, we, we try to catch the AI-generated stuff, and we just, I just veto that. I don't like it. I want you using your Wacom tablet at all times. It is Wacom. I thought it was Wacom. Maybe it is. Okay, then don't correct me unless you're sure. Okay. I know I never corrected you. I said I thought it was. <sighs> don't it make, was. Don't uh, make, <laughs> <laughs> See, this is, why people don't, is. this is why people get mad at you. You have a way. You have a way. It's amazing. You have a way. Yeah, it's called parsing. Oh. Uh, as part of our time, talent, and treasure, which is the uh, well, all we ask in return. I was explaining this uh, to some people we're having uh, dinner with. Said, so how do you do this? Said, oh, by the way, I'm looking for someone in Phoenix, Arizona, who can uh, do some audio engineering for producing a podcast. Email me. If someone wants some help. Um, I said, yeah, well, you know, we've been doing this for 15, more than 15 years. And, the, and I'm trying to explain time, talent, treasure. And it, it's like, it's scary for people when they think about it. But once you really get into it, once you do it, once you've built up your own Gitmo Nation, which is not easy, takes time. You have to have patience. You have to have quality product. That's the Thank key. You. Oh, there you go. Yes. Outstanding product is a requirement. Um, and then, you I know, mean, I can I listen to podcasts, as, not as much as you do, but I listen to a lot of them. And it's like, who's going to, these podcasts are just two guys gassing. I yeah. mean, we do some of that, but we don't, we try to put real content in. Yes, correct. And I'll say that, um, you know, as, as, as people keep telling me, oh, you got to go on the tool boy and the pool boy, uh, pool boy show. No, but I will say that his, and I said that twice, his um, culture show is actually pretty good. Have you seen his culture show? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Tim, the pool boy. I know Tim the Pool Boy. Yeah, so he has a... Uh, he has Where's a, a beanie? Yes. He has another podcast where he just sits with people a la Joe Rogan. Then he's got good no, guests. This is a Joe Rogan clone. Yes, it's a Joe Rogan clone, yes. Which is exactly why I'll never go on it, because that would be like going on The Tonight Show and then being a whore and going on The Late Show. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We never right. You, you, you're the Joe Rogan guy. That's you right. go on Joe Rogan's show. Yeah, exactly. I will never, I will never butcher, uh, betray Joe Rogan. Never. But you did go on Glenn Beck. Yeah, not the same. Not the same. I would say Glenn Beck's in a different category. Yes. Dif- very different category. But in fact, I would say. Uh, interestingly enough, when I went on Glenn Beck, Joe called me to come on like two weeks later. I think that was his signal to say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, well, maybe he was telling you not to go on Beck anymore. Mm-hmm. I think I, Beck should get word of this and Beck, then maybe get you back on. Beck has not called, so. <laughs> so oh, you know who called? Who, who contacted me? Who wants me back on for a full hour? Come on. Ruben. No, Ruben. I've never been on Ruben. Back on. Oh, back on? Yeah. Back oh, on. with Tom Wood. No. no full hour. Oh, Tom- oh, I know who it is. Yeah. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Megan. Yeah. I think we got one one new listener from the Megan Kelly show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think it was one. <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> one. I, and I don't think it's going to, and you go on her show again, it's going to be another one. Probably. I like her, she though. She doesn't have the crossover that Rogan has. It's a problem. Well, she, no, the, is, you'd hope that you could get some people to come listen to us, but. I think we got one. Yeah, we got one Kelly donation. Megan. And does donation. she put a? Does she put a lower third on there with the No Agenda show underneath her name? Yes, no. Yeah. Yes, she did. I don't think so. Yes, she did. I'm pretty sure she did. She mentioned it. No, she me- mentioning it is not the same as a lower third. Okay, but I will. Well, I think it was on the lower third. I will ensure it is on the lower third. I will have her put Adam Curry co-host No Agenda show. Uh, Joe Rogan's boy. 
Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> if you put, I think it was maybe had. Maybe it was Adam Curry podcast or something ah! like that on the earth. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's ex, what you're going to no, get if no, you don't I think it was make ex, a point of no, it. No, I always make a point of it. I think she had XMTV VJ. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. And now as you mentioned, right. I think that's what, what it was. I think you're right. And, and Tina was mad because what was she just fangirling over MTV? Who cares? Look at all the stuff you're done. Look at what you're doing. And she's right. She's right. She's right. Keep her nose. Uh, we kick off our. And uh, by the way, that's these podcasts are like yeah, all of them are supposed to be log rolling anyway. That's what you do. Log it's rolling. It's like people don't come on the Tonight Show just because they're nice guys. They got a movie promotion. to plug. Promotion. Or they got a promotion. new promotion. Promotion. It's all about promotion. Yes. And who? And anyone who doesn't think that's true, which is by the way, where we have no guests. Yeah, correct. Because uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that, oh, that's the reason. Well, that's one reason. Mm-hmm. The other, I got a million reasons. But that's one good reason. Uh, but if you're going to be on these shows that are all s- promotional, you, you're supposed to get promoted. Jeez. Yes. What does it take? I agree. I agree. What does it take to get a drink around here? <laughs> uh, we kick it off with our monthly donation from one of our top donors of all time. Sir Anonymous of Dog Patch and Lower Slobovia comes in to save the day once again with a coded donation amount. Let's make sure we say it right this time. 2529. And this is, again, I presume, in cash with several $2 bills. You received it, so confirm? I, it was counted by two people to make sure it was exactly right, and it was two, two $2 bills uh-huh. and a fiver. And a fi- oh, right, so a fiver, and a, so then you had a 20, and then 2,500s? Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Sir Onimus of Dogpatch and Lower Slobovia. We don't know much about him, but he does always send in a note, which is usually or always thoughtful. Um, and it's little- Generally. Yeah, it's, and it's longer than normal this time, but here he is. Chag Pesach Semach, Sameh, Sameh. Happy Easter and Ramadan Karim to all producers. Religious periods are so important despite the ridiculous news cycle that has virtually eliminated their coverage and importance in the M5M, particularly after our democratically elected officials and many that were not elected closed all houses of worship during the lockdown. They're atheists. Hello? I I encourage all to re-engage in their faith rather than permit this drivel or this drive towards a secular belief in material things. I'll repeat that. I encourage all to re-engage in their faith rather than permit this drive toward a secular belief in material things. Focusing on a prayerful and faithful life has its advantages. For those whose holiday has passed, I hope you have renewed your faith. John. Thank you for correcting the donation amount from last month. Your reward, a railroad trip for you. Check out the new railroad station stamps at USPS.com. Although uh, they're no match for the transcontinental railroad stamps, I suspect you will like them. So is this a prize that you get, or is he telling you to go get some stamps? He's telling me to go get some stamps. He knows I was, as a kid, I was an adamant stamp collector. Yes. And I still buy a plate now and again. I had a penny black as a kid. Mm, Good for you. You don't even know what that is. No, I don't. Yeah, a very, very, very famous stamp. Would you still have it? I wish. I think I I traded it for an outboard motor. Yeah, that's probably worth a million bucks by now. <laughs> I also sold 65 Bitcoin at $900. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you I, go. I, I'm a genius. You should have kept that. Oh, thanks, John. Thanks for that uh, tip. The artwork on the $2 bill I was referencing was Trumbull's depiction of the signing of the Declaration of Independence on the back of the bill as it captures all of the signers. Yes. And I have seen people who have uh, told me that they went out and got some uh, $2 bills. They liked it. And they liked the $2 bill. Uh, no jingles, but goat karma for the. <laughs> it's funny. No jingles, but goat karma for the millions of goats and other animals that will be sacrificed <laughs> this Eid. Yes, indeed. And as always, thank you very much, Sir Anonymous of Dogpatch and Lower Slobovia. You've got. You've got. <laughs> karma. Nice. Goat meat's delicious, by the way. You know, I've had bad goat meat. I've had in Jamaica. I like some jerk goat meat, but I had a, a goat meat at a Mexican restaurant. It was nasty. It smelled like goat meat. 
You're not supposed to. Oh, that's no good. No. Goat meat doesn't have any, it shouldn't smell at all. Correct. Oh, that's just bad goat meat. That was crappy yeah, goat Yeah, bad meat. any meat smells is no good. <laughs> Anything that smells like goat is generally not a good product. No agenda shops up next from Fayetteville, Georgia. 608.25. This is the latest share of the, no, 608.25. Mm-hmm. This is the latest share of the no agenda shop profits. Sorry for the lack of updates recently. We've been putting our no agenda education to use, launching a personal podcast at stillchillin.com. Any positive karma would be greatly appreciated. We'll give him some karma. Go podcasting. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Where's my go? I, I haven't had the go podcasting thing on this show in a long time. I, I have to I have to thank him, uh, our guy there at no, uh, noagendashop.com. Where's my go? Oh, what was my problem here? Go pod. Do you remember what that go podcasting is from? Do you remember when? Yeah, what- it was you were at uh, one of the few... Uh, events you've gone to that was a podcasting event. You gave a speech, mm-hmm. and then you dropped a microphone and said, "Go podcast." No, you told me. You told me before I went there. I said, "When you're done, you just you should just just yell, go podcasting." I did. Yeah, go I know. Podcasting. And you dropped. Okay, you dropped the mic after. Obviously, yeah. So I wanted to thank our guy over there because uh, I ordered uh, six T-shirts. Um, six of the. Uh, do you, are you familiar with the band Mercy Me? You ever heard of them? No, I'm not. They had a huge hit a couple of years ago. Um, uh, I can only imagine, like triple platinum. And uh, they're playing in San Antonio tonight. Turns out they are huge No Agenda fans. And they no, and they, that reminds me of our Weezer drummer. Yeah, I don't know where. What happened to him? <laughs> He's not a huge No Agenda fan like Mercy Me. In fact, they did a movie about this band uh, with Dennis Quaid played the guy's dad, Bart's dad. So uh, I said, yeah, we're, oh, we'd love for you and Tina to come. Come on, come on down, you know, backstage, you park, park ne- next to the bus. Uh, and, and so I said, yeah, well, let's order some T-shirts. Short drive. Yeah, it's not. Well, we have to I have to boogie right after the show. We do have to. Oh, it's going to be today? The tonight. concert's tonight? Yeah, tonight. Yeah, I'm taking the T-shirts tonight. And, uh, and so our No Agenda Shop guy, he made sure he got the T-shirts to us in time, threw in a couple extra ones. Um, super, super. Thank you very much. Um, oh, and I need to give the karma. There we go. Karma, as requested. You've got karma. Sardonic is from Raritan, New Jersey. I've been there. 580.08. So it's uh, boobs backwards. Nice. <coughs> and he says, huh. a split switcheroo. Ah, oh, it's going to be complicated. Sardonic of the Raritan Valley here, fresh out of the 732 meetup. Oh, that was the one with Sir Daniels. My deepest apologies for my lame attempt, my lame accent during the subsequent meetup report. I'll be playing that in a bit. That being said, I want to take a new friend halfway there. Please attribute $500 of this donation to Carrie (laughs) Oakey. The remaining boob donation is for Rick, the hidden host of our amazing meetup. Stay strong, stay safe, stay safe, and stay lit. You got it, man. I will put Carrie Oakey as a switcheroo for you. Thank you very much. I'm going to read the next two, starting with Barry Growl. In Franklin, Tennessee, five hundred bucks. Nice. No note. Uh, double up, uh, double up karma for him. You've got uh, double up uh, uh, karma. And then there's Sir Scovey of the of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's also Sir Scovey, Earl of the Piedmont. No note. Ah, people. And that's three 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 dot three three. And we to give him a double. Yes, and yes, I will. You've got. Karma. And a reminder that if you can't fit the note into PayPal, which you should be able to, um, or for some reason you feel compelled to send the note, send it to uh, notes at noagendashow.net. And I th- exactly. And Anonymous from Aurora, Colorado sent 333.13 and said, says jingles uh, in the morning Mexican. <laughs> version Spanish perhaps and R2D2 karma MJMK back in MX IVF baby making karma and new consulting practice karma from anonymous driver of the gap you got it no problem you've got karma Ashley Corrales in Needville Texas what a name for a town Needville uh, must be Democrats <laughs> 333 
And she writes, love listening to the both of you. Thank you for all your hard work. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, very much so. Um, next is Ryan George from Crest Hill, Illinois, 333. Thank you. I'd like to make a switcheroo donation for my smoking hot girlfriend, Danielle Doherty. All right. Hold on a second. So, Danielle Doherty. I'm doing this on the fly because, you know, we get the spreadsheet on the day of the show. So. Everything's last second. It because is. Because we do everything to the minute. Yeah. Exactly. Our show's up to date. Correct. Uh, we're in a very small town with a trans epidemic. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> it's a, hope in I, Crest Hill, Illinois. Illinois. Yeah. Crest Hill, Illinois? Yeah. Huh. I, I, I just wanted to say. It's I, everywhere. I have received notes from multiple producers who have this happening in their family. The trans Maoism is taking yeah. hold. Uh, yeah. So we're in, in a very schools and and, by, and a lot of this, just like the girls who have ticks on tick on um, on Instagram and uh, Instagram mainly. All of a sudden, they have Tourette's, which it, it's it's contagion. It's not it's not really Tourette's. Take it from a Tourette's guy. This is contagion. These girls like they all get the same Tourette's, and it's a it, contagion is like when someone pukes, everyone else has to puke. It's that kind it's called of called mass hysteria. Thank you. Mass hysteria. There you go. Uh, not always, of course, not always. There are exceptions, but it, clearly something's going on. We're in a very small town with a trans epidemic. I hope I don't get shivved. <laughs> God. Can I get a de douching and a gay frogs? Keep up the good work. <laughs> You've been de douched. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. There you go. And we go to associate executive producer, starting with Brian McDonough, McDonough in Coppell, Texas. And his 253 is in honor of his human resources winning score, which is 253, I assume, in the match of last week's PBA tournament in Houston. No. Oh. What's his name? I should... I Brian, don't. what? Uh, oh, no, the name of the, of the bowler. Well, his socials are Bowling uh, Brady, I think. Brady. Bowling Brady. Bowling Brady 300. So he is the youngest ever PBA champion at 15? Yeah. Holy moly. You know, you used to be a, a pro bowler, right? No, I was, on the, I was an NCAA college bowler. It's the best I got. But I, my, my doubles partner, which we won the uh, intramural championship with at the University of California, became, went on to become a... He carried me. We went... <laughs> believe me. <laughs> he... Uh, he went on to become a pro and won a number of tournaments. Uh, wow. And he's done, now he still teaches bowling in Rich Karuba. I love that we, we have, um, we have Ashley, is it Ashley? Um, the, the formula Toyota racer. She's also very young. Uh, and I think we will have no agenda on her car this season. Uh, then we have bowling Brady 300 youngest ever PBA champion. We got that all, that, the, all that's the, astonishing by the way. Yeah. All the cool kids hang with no agenda. He must have a, well, we don't know. They listen to the show, but he must have one hell of a shot. Mm. Uh, all right. He probably has thrown a 300 too. Onward. Central Jersey, seven thirty two meetup in Parlin, New Jersey. Uh, row a duck, short one, two twenty two switcheroo. This is the winner of the coaster raffle where you get a coaster and a chance to win a raffle for donating for the Central Jersey, seven thirty two meetup. Uh, and the winner is Rob Diggle. Rob Diggle. All right. All Rob cr- Diggle. All, that's a name. All credits go to Rob Diggle. So uh, consider that done. You got it. Thank you very much. Jo- Joseph Terry in White, Georgia is up next and he came in with just a flat 200 bucks and said john i'm sorry i'm late to the party happy belated birthday may you have many sweet returns joe terry in white georgia uh sean olson is in san pedro california and wants some jingles can you see that juice that's not a great question and goat karma hello oh this is from flight of the no agenda meetup in riverside california also have a meetup report from them as well i can't believe i was on the same side of an argument as lady g oh. oops <laughs> as lady g well no more Thanks for clearing up how silly that is, Lindsey Graham. Thanks for clearing up how silly that yeah. is. I can't believe he said he's pro-China, pro-one China, but will also defend Taiwan. What a stooge. 
Also, thank you for the coverage on the destabilizing trans movement. I know we don't want churches to be politicized, but I think more should be speaking out against this movement, the trans Maoist movement, I think is what we should call it specifically. That's a little more uh, detailed and uh, accurate. And uh, yes, we got the jingles for you. Oh my gosh. Can you see that juice? Great question. That's not a great question. <laughs> You've got classic JCD. Karma. Now, this next note, um, you and I have not discussed this, but I, I would recommend that there's a lot of medical and personal information. I, I'm going in here. to, I, I've already done this. Okay, good. Uh, I, in this regard, we think alike. Yes. Uh, so this is an anonymous donation, two hundred dollars, and a very long note. I'm only going to read the beginning of it and the very end. We probably had the same it, idea. Yes. There's too much uh, details on things that are very uh, personal for an anonymous note. I was just listening to Adam discussing the thoughts on the Dylan Bud Light issue and I had to write before Adam spoke the words. I was thinking to myself, if Budweiser marketing wanted nothing to do with us, could they even say so? (laughs) Or to do anything to do with this, could they even say so? Well, they kind of did. I've been trying to discuss injuries from childhood vaccines for two decades and it's it's been a nightmare. It would be an understatement. The censorship alone has been terrifying. I could go on about... The, for pages, but I won't. Briefly, I've been arrested in a mall because the owner didn't like my sign. I've been lied to and censored and threatened with arrest by the local chapter head of a well-known autism support group. And then she goes on with more details. And um, and she, it's none of it good. And so I'm just going to go to the end with it because it's a pretty long note. My ex told me years ago, you'll shut up if you know it's good for your family. <sighs> Damn it, I hate to say it, but he was right. Yeah, I think the trans thing is a perverted fad. There are perverted media pushes. I also think it's uh, uh, atrogenic, which means doctors cause it. I don't have reams of evidence like I do for the Vax Autism Link, but my gut feeling, they're trying to desperately to normalize it the same as they did for autism. I know this is long, but it makes me feel so much better to hear it read on your show. Please keep me anonymous. Thanks for all you do. Sincerely. Yes, thank you. And then we have you in our thoughts because it seems like you got a lot of a bum ride on a lot of things. Would that be the yeah. right way to say it? Bum ride, real bum ride. Bum ride. And thank you so much for uh, supporting the show at the same time. And that does wrap up our uh, executive and associate executive producers for episode 14, uh, 1547. We're going to continue all the way through since it was a pretty short list down to the 50s. Um, and then we've got, uh, we've got a, a nighting to do, some birthdays and some meetups. John? Let's go down to the rest of these. And uh, starting with Anonymous, 167.10, and another Anonymous at 151.42. May I just say something here? These are orange yeah. because these were Bitcoin donations. A reminder- yeah, I would like to know where that money is going because I don't see it in the bank account. It should be, it should be in the bank account. I haven't all, seen a nickel of it in the <laughs> it, uh, We'll check because it all, it all comes in at midnight. It's all swept into the bank account. You've seen, uh, no, you've seen no transfers? I have not seen one. Okay. But we'll, we'll make sure. It's I'm, a- I may have seen one. Yeah, but, well, that was from... It's, it comes under the cloud something or other. Yeah, that, I think that's what it is. Um, so a reminder, if you're, if you're going to pay that way, you got to put your name in the note. Otherwise, you get this, anonymous. So th- yeah. thank, you very, thank you very much to both of you. The second one with 152 says it's a douchebag, no jingles, no car. Okay. You're a douchebag. Uh, Allison comes in with 150. Uh... And this was done as a straight up bank transfer. And did this come in? You saw that came in? Yeah, that came in as a bank transfer, as a swift bank transfer. Oh. She's in Taiwan or someplace and she had to oh. do it that way. Oh, wow. Okay. And she says, old fashioned bank transfers, been completed. And I did see that come in. Lucas Williams in Roswell, New Mexico, $100. Teresa Marson in Plymouth, Michigan, $100. Kevin McLaughlin, 8008, up oh, in Locust, North Carolina. <laughs> On a run. Yeah. Greg Mellon in Glen Moore, Pennsylvania, 7147. Happy birthday, John. Uh, Josh B- Buford is also a happy birthday. $71 from Midlothian, Virginia. Jacob Ali in Wichita, Kansas, 5533. Uh, she's got a birthday wish for a birth- her husband or 
I have bridged my human resource. I'm sorry, it's a guy and me. Uh, Jacob, okay. There's no, no husband involved. John Tucker in Omaha, Nebraska, 5510. Great stories, Grandpa John, he writes. <laughs> James Edmondson in South Plainfield, New Jersey. Double nickels on the dime. Richard Futter in UK, London, 5510. David Kekta in Santan Valley, uh, Arizona. He's a rural carrier. Oh, I, which reminds me. Uh, I, have, I have a clip about that later, by the I, way. Okay, good. Because I have some, I've been going back and forth with the guy who's a union steward. Mm-hmm. And he says the problem with, he, by the way, uh, David needs a dedouching. Let's do that first. You've been dedouched. He also needs to call out uh, Mac Clan as a douchebag. Douchebag. Uh, 73's uh, N7 DRK. Uh, he says that the, the, there's two unions. He says the union for the rural carriers is not the same as the losers that <laughs> wow. are, the, are, are, are the city carriers <laughs> okay. who've got a lousy union and they're the ones getting the most screwed by everything. Mm. And and he says, and we're unfortunately mixing up our details oh. uh, as we go, as we try to deconstruct what's going on with the with the postal service. So okay. we should at least know that much. All right. And, and he seems to be, and he is a uh, a steward, a shop steward. That's a big deal if you're in the union. Shelby Losey in Rapid City, South Dakota, 5037. Happy birthday to her smoking hot husband. Mm. Baron, Sir Economic Hitman in Tomball, Texas, five, $50.01. Now we have $50 donors, name and location. Kevin Dills, Sir Kevin in Huntersville, North Carolina. Christian Freeman in San Marcos, Texas. Titus Chow in uh, Houston, Texas. Easy Landscapes in North Stonington, <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> I love guys who do that. <laughs> uh, nice. Michael Thompson in New Brownsfells, Texas. A lot of Texans today in the $50 donor link, uh, rate race. Philip Ballou, Louisville, Kentucky. Chris Slowinski, Sir Chris up in Sherwood Park, Alberta. Uh, Kelly McDill in Mission Hills, Kansas. Big <laughs> Big Papa Productions, Inc. in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Timothy Moore in Arlington, Texas. And Corey Katz in Cave Creek, Arizona. That is our list of associate executive producers, executive producers, and plain old donators to the No Agenda Show f- 1547. Thank you all very much for supporting us, especially our execs and associate executive producers and people under $50 who uh, do that for reasons of anonymity, but also because they're on those sustaining donations, which do help out. Those are little uh, recurring payments you can make. Uh, there's many, many um, versions. You can make one up yourself. You can find out about them here. Dvorak.org. Slash N A And especially associates and our execs, those are titles you keep forever. Congratulations. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. Shut up, slave. Shut up, slave. It's your birthday, birthday. Yes, here is our birthday list. We got Sir Andy of Terrigal Beach and Dame Kylie of the Double D Cups wishing their beautiful daughter Lucilla Cantrell a happy birthday. She turns 15 tomorrow. Shelby Lowe's wishes her smoking hot husband Justin Lowe's a happy birthday, 37 today. Uh, Daniel, did I say Cantrell on the trip she celebrates today? I'm sorry. Daniel Papuga turning 38 tomorrow. There we go. Kirkus Maximus celebrating on the 18th. Teresa Marson wishes... Uh, her Josh Kleins, her son Josh, her son Josh Kleins, a happy birthday. That'll be on the twenty-first. Jacob Alley celebrates, and Jacob Alley wishes his human resource, Camo Bostic, a happy birthday. And we say happy birthday from everybody here at the best podcast in the universe. Before I go to our nighting, we have a note from our knight, uh, Tim Moore, who says, "In the morning, I'm requesting a belated knighthood after finishing the layaway program last May. It took me a year to decide on my knight name." And roundtable selection, which is why I'm only just now sending this note. So, just so you know, 
you can achieve knighthood with these layaways, and it can take a long time, but it does happen. Um, please knight me, Sir Tim of the Tarrant Swamplands, and I'll have Glenn Fittich and fried bologna sandwiches at the round table. Yes, breakfast of champions. No jingles, no karma. Thanks for all you do. Sincerely, Sir Tim. Well, about to be Sir Tim as we get our blades out, John, for this single Here night. Here it is. There we go. All right, Tim Moore, step on up. Thank you very much for your layaway program, Knighthood. It's just as valid as any other one, and I'm very proud to pronounce the KD today as Sir Tim of the Tarrant Swamplands. And for you, Sir Tim, we got Hookers and Blow, Rent Boys, and Chardonnay, and by request, Glenn Fittich and fried bologna sandwiches right here at the round table. Look at them. Smells great. Fish pie and fellatio, if you want it. We got Harlots and Haldol, more goodies for you, beers and blunts. We got Ruben S. Women and Rose, Gases and Sake, Baca Manila, Bong Hits and Bourbon. Sparkling cider and escorts, ginger ale and gerbils. We got breast milk and pablum. We got some diet soda and video games, Polish potato vodka. But maybe you just want the mutton and meat. Everybody seems to live it, to love it. Sir Tim, uh, drink up on that along with your Glen Fittich and uh, your uh, bologna sandwich. And uh, head over to noagendarings.com where you can uh, select your ring size and send that to us. Tell us where to send it. Anybody can look at noagendarings.com. You can look at that with envy. Envy, because the only way you can get is become a knight or a dame of the No Agenda Roundtable. And thank you so much for supporting your No Agenda show. No Agenda After I blew our friends away last night at dinner about uh, about our value for value model, and then I said, "Oh yeah, by the way, we have these meetups." Uh, meetups, I said, "Yeah, these meetups. They're self organizing. Everyone goes to noagendameetups dot com. All over the world, people get together, groups of five, groups of fifty. We're expecting quite a big one uh, tomorrow, as Tina the Keeper and I will be flying to Nashville uh, for the. Um, uh, this is a, a do over." Uh, since I had COVID last year, not that it mattered that much, but no one wanted me around. Um, this will be the Tax Day Family Skating Meetup at Rivergate Skate Center in Madison, Tennessee. The Duke of the South, uh, Sir Patrick Coble, is organizing that, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, before we get to the rest of our meetups, let's um, have a couple reports. Here's Flight of the No Agenda. Um, which I don't. I think it was number forty at this point. Yo, bravo! Hey, Adam Bill, over here at the meetup. Uh, Flight of the No Agenda. Get me an F cancer out there. My wife starts treatment on the 17th. We love the last episode, every episode, but it was fantastic. We'll talk to you in the morning. In the morning, it's Steve. Hey, I'm not being triggered or held to blame. In the morning, Jesse here at the meetup. No longer a douchebag. Hey, shake that rain stick like a man. We need some more rain down here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, by request. You've got karma. Now we go to the No Agenda 732 Central Jersey Meetup Report. This is Sir R. Daniels at the 732 Central Jersey Meetup at the Garden State Distillery in Toms River. Be brave, do something. Thank you for keeping us informed and inspired. And by the way, I checked with Dan. He's doing okay. In the morning, this is Mappy. Thank you guys for your courage. In the morning to you, John and Adam. This is Rob. Hope you're having a fantastic springtime. Watch out for those allergies. In the morning, this is Karaoke, who's feeling a little loopy from Seaweed and Oyster Vodka. Craig Kosha, a newbie. Happy to be here. Holly Hotchkiss, it's always great to get together. In the morning, Rob here had a great time. Thank you, Dan, for hosting us. Hey, mate. This is Sir Donick of the Raritan Valley just saying, hey, keep it up, eh? This is Dave, and all my graphs are hockey sticks. And finally, this is Sir Nobody with no clue what's going on. <laughs> In the morning! Okay, so now I know what that accent was. I got one of them there. Okay. Thank you very much. South Jersey, exit 103, Tom's River. Sir Spencer, Kansas City meetup. He did a little, made a little promo for us. In Kansas City, we're known for our traditions. Bebop jazz. Hundreds of fountains. And above all else, barbecue. Join us for our smoking hot spring barbecue this Sunday, April 23rd at 333 at Electric Park in Lenexa. Get all the details and RSVP at noagendameetups.com. It's like a party, Kansas City style. (laughs) 
Um, by now, I think uh, the Friends of Freedom meetup in Glover Park Brewery, Marietta, Georgia, is uh, probably winding down. They start at 1.30 this afternoon. Crossroads of America, the No Agenda Tribal Meetup, Spirit <coughs> Distillation in Westfield, Indiana, Mash House at the West Fork Whiskey Company. Uh, that is about an hour underway, so you can uh, join them there if you want. Indiana's a big meetup uh, state. Impromptu Utah Valley Meetup, 3 o'clock, just getting underway at Strap Tank Brewery in Springville, Utah. We have the I Can't Believe It's Not Thousands of Sealed Indictments Meetup, 4 o'clock at, uh, in Jefferson, Texas. So that's uh, in a private home, so you need to get that off of noagendameetups.com and hurry up as it starts in about 10 minutes. On Monday, Tax Day Family Skating Meetup, talked about earlier, 6 o'clock at Rivergate Skate Central, Madison, Tennessee. Adam and the Keeper, will, Curry and the Keeper, will be there. Looking forward to it. It's all the No Agenda uh, people out there. We're, this will be fun. And and I'm not going to be roller skating because that's the, I don't need that. We know what will happen. Uh, on Wednesday, the Red Pillar Club 33 meetup, 633 at Zianos Italian Eatery, DuPont Road in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I tell you, those guys are nuts. Hooey, hooey organizes. And on the next show day, Thursday, 420. Ah, remember, John, 420. Dona- yeah. Donation day. Write it down, 420. 420, 420. 420. Born day to be me. Darius Unity, 2 o'clock at the Nation Mall, Washington, D.C. Ah, spook meetup. Also on 420, Sanity Brigade, 3rd Thursday, 5 o'clock at Selkirk Abbey in Post Falls, Idaho. And we have the Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia Tri-State meetup at 6 o'clock. Also on Thursday, the Union Jack Pub and Restaurant in Winchester, Virginia. And finally for this list on Thursday, Charlotte's Thirsty Third Thursday, 7 o'clock, Edge Tavern, Charlotte, North Carolina, as always. No agenda meetups. Um, connection is protection. This is where you find your community. Your community is no agenda. And you can find all these meetups at noagendameetups.com. If you can't find one near you, start one yourself. It's easy. Sometimes you want to go hang out with all the nights and days. You want to be where you won't be, triggered or held to blame. You want to be where everybody feels the same. It's like a party. Man, I have no ISOs. I'm just what? I, I know. I realize all of a sudden I have no ISO. Do you have an ISO? I have a good one. Well, thank goodness. It's the only one you have. I see. You know, I only have one, and uh, it's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a slammer. It was done with a producer friend. Oh, he oh. found it on the King of the Hill show. What the hell was that? <laughs> It'll have to do. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, but, I promise I'd play the uh, the clip. Where's my clip here about the uh, hmm about the USPS? Ah, here it is from ABC. Gerald Groff spent years delivering the mail during the week and worshiping faithfully on Sundays. That is until 2015, when Amazon contracted with the Postal Service to deliver packages. They began to. Ec- ask people of my position to deliver on Sundays or holidays, and I told them I'm not going to be able to work on the Lord's Day at all. At first, the postmaster accommodated Groff, but a year later, his boss said things had changed. She uh, said that basically you're going to have to find another job or you're going to work Sundays this time. Unwilling to compromise his faith, Groff transferred to a post office nearby, one that had just four carriers and still did not deliver on Sundays. But as demand for Amazon delivery soared, Groff eventually could not avoid Sunday assignments, shifts he chose to skip 24 times over two years. Groff resigned in 2019 and sued. Federal law requires employers to accommodate the religious beliefs of workers unless it would pose an undue hardship on business. The Postal Service and two lower federal courts say Groff's refusal to work Sundays was clearly a hardship. Groff, who now works in the mailroom at a private retirement community, wants the Supreme Court to force employers to to be more accommodating of the religious beliefs of workers. But Rachel Lazar with Americans United for Separation of Church and State says the impact could be sweeping. This case opens the floodgates to every employee in the workforce being forced to carry the burden of someone else's religious practices, whether it's in a pharmacy context, asking to not fill birth control prescriptions or (laughs) in a workplace asking to have the right to discriminate against LGBTQ people. Oh, yeah. I thought that was 
funny more than interesting. I'm not so legalistic that about it. doesn't sound right, not the so, whole story. Not so legalistic about these things. But um, this is because of the contracting uh, of uh, USPS for Amazon packages, et cetera. This is what has driven all of our mail carriers into a, you know, into a tailspin as we've received note after note because you know they're now asked to work six, seven days. Uh, they're not getting the, uh, the, the, the bonuses they thought they were getting. It's part of an IT problem with scanners. And you spoke to a union person? He's, I'm going to read some of his notes in the next couple of shows. Uh, yes, but he made it clear, and I think this is the situation is, that the union representing this guy who is bitching, obviously, I mean, it's a union thing. You can't make, if there's a union involved, you just can't make people all of a sudden have to work on Sunday. It's not in the union contract. It's not in the contract that you can do this. You can't just change the rules <laughs> if there's a union that's that's a real union. Mm-hmm. So this is there's something fishy about that story, and I he- hope to uh, clear it up. To debunk it. Pre-bunk it. Whatever. Now I have a couple of leftovers if you want to hear them. Uh, there's a world. How about a world story? How about let's at least get this into our show, which oh, is the yes. Sudan situation. Yeah, this is crazy. At least 25 people have been killed and hundreds injured after fighting erupted this weekend across Sudan's capital of Khartoum. The fighting is between Sudan's army and the powerful paramilitary, uh, paramilitary rapid support forces known as RSF. The conflict, which is unfolding in Khartoum and other cities, has been roundly condemned by the international community, but it is continuing, as NPR's Emmanuel Akanwatu reports. A power struggle between the RSF and Sudan's army has turned parts of the country into a battlefield. After months of rising tensions, people in Sudan's capital Khartoum walked to gunshots and fierce fighting on Saturday, continuing into the night. Both forces have accused each other of instigating the ongoing fighting, which has seen civilians scrambling for shelter and open conflict in residential and commercial areas. The battles follow a bitter dispute between the military and the RSF, on who will lead during the country's fragile transition to democracy that now appears in jeopardy. So I've, I've been looking at the story and, I've, uh, and some of the military contacts have sent me some videos of stuff going on, which immediately makes me wonder, who is really fighting here? What's really going on? Is it us with someone else? I mean, there's clearly something messed up here. Well, this country is in the West Clark 7 and it's never been taken over. Oh, good point. Sudan is in the West Clark 7? Yeah, you want to play it? Yeah, hold on a second. Ah, oh, hold on. West Clark. Here we go, West Clark 7. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just... He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Wow, good call. Huh. Well, this five-year plan of theirs was a little off. (laughs) Was it been 20 years since he did that little spiel? 2001, yeah, more than 20 years. Uh, but still, okay, sometimes think, well, they got some other ones there. We got Libya. We did that one. Yeah, Somalia. Don't yeah, we, got some, <laughs> we got some goodies in there. Yeah, wow. Okay, well, so yeah, I presume we're involved in that. Mm, I that's, would think so. That's horrible. Well, then maybe this other world story, um, since you will not see, and even this report from France 24 will not show you the 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 rioting in France and people's heads being busted open. I mean, not, now they're really fighting. Now it's not funny. But we won't see that in this report. Just hours after the Constitutional Council gave his bill the green light on Friday evening, President Macron signed his controversial pension reform into law. Opposition parties denounced the council's decision to approve a bill that is widely rejected by the public. We are in an impasse in which they have put us in. And this is not this decision of the Constitutional Council that will change the mind of an entire people who are determined not to let this pension reform pass. The council rejected some measures in the pension bill, but the raising of the retirement age from 62 to 64 has always been the cornerstone of the reform. The government says that the reforms will be implemented on the 1st of September. According to the Prime Minister, there were no winners on Friday. The Constitutional Council has ruled that the reform was in line with our constitution. 
The bill has reached the end of its democratic process. <laughs> Tonight, there are no winners and no. I like that. It's reached the end of its democratic process, which was not democratic at all. At least, not well, you know, this is interesting because, at least from what I can tell, looking into this, Macron. When he ran for the job, he ran on the platform that he was going to do this. So oh, really? he was democratically elected for the purposes of changing this. And now all of a sudden, everyone's bent out of shape. This is very suspicious. Well, oh, then he can get uh, one other thing I've, I've heard. Jens Stoltenberg is out at the end of this year. I think it's his, yeah. his term. Do you know who is now being uh, whispered around uh, Brussels as his replacement? Uh, who's Queen Ursula? Yes, nailed it. No, yes, I just guessed that. Well, it makes sense because you know the Pfizer text messages and you know so much. She's looking a little ragged. Too much controversy. She's tainted as you know, and maybe France Timmermans, my guy, can become the new queen over there. Huh. If she can become the new NATO chief, they're talking about that. I I think she'd be perfect for that. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Don't you think she'd be great? Oh, she looks like a, a type. Anyway. All me, right, I got one last wait, clip. Let me, let me finish. I was, oh, um, you got more? Yeah, I was, gonna, I was going to do this one because I've had this on my list for weeks, weeks. We have not talked about it. I fi- finally, there was a, I think it was a CNBC interview with Jamie Dimon about this lawsuit, this Epstein lawsuit uh, which is taking place in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And uh, here's a short, inter- very short interview about it. A client of yours, and that is Jeffrey Epstein. Steve Morgan's being sued now by the U.S. Virgin Islands. They're alleging that your bank helped facilitate payments to Epstein's victims and benefited from human trafficking while ignoring warnings. Do those allegations have merit? So I cannot talk about current litigation except to say that whenever these things come up, we have some of the best lawyers in the world compliance out of the DOJ, out of SEC enforcement divisions who review all of these things and make decisions at the time based on what they know, as best as they know. You're going to be deposed, we've learned now, in this case in the spring. In retrospect, Jamie, do you think J.P. Morgan should have acted more quickly after Epstein pleaded guilty to one of these charges in 2008 because he was your client for five more years? Hindsight is a fabulous gift. What I like about this clip is that he just says, hey, we've got the best. Pe- we hire all the best people right out of the government agencies. After they did all our bidding, we give them great jobs here. And they're the best people. We got all the best people. Yeah. It's so sick. Yeah. It's actually what he did there was also uh, send the message out. Mm hmm. You hey, know, hey, rub bar, you know, you hey, give us a little uh, slack dub, dub. here. You're going to get paid. You're going to get repaid. Don't worry about it. Rub a dub, you're going to get dub. your money. You're no, you, get your, you'll be fine. You'll be good. You get your kickback. Don't worry good. about it. It's all good. All right. Last clip for you. All right. This is a, a Biden clip. Yeah. <laughs> and here's, here, okay. here's Biden uh, mumbling something about something, and, 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 he, and he's going to lick the world. There's nothing our nations can't achieve if we do it together. I really mean it. So thank you all. God bless you all. Let's go. Let's go lick lick the world. Let's get it done. (laughs) He really did say lick the world, didn't he? Yeah. (laughs) Let's go lick lick the world. Let's get it done. Yeah, let's go lick it. Oh, lick man. It. Yeah, let's lick go it good. lick the world. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this, that is dun, beautiful. Dun. Thanks, John. That's something I can never unhear now. That's perfect. Perfect. All right, everybody. That is your deconstruction for today. Uh, make sure you send in those boots on the ground reports. We appreciate that. Also, um, remember that we'll be here on Thursday. And I will have a... Uh, that's a 420. T- that's 420. I will have a detailed report from the meetup in Nashville. Very excited about uh, going there. Should be a good one. Coming to you from the heart of the Texas Hill Country here in FEMA region number six. In the morning, everybody, I'm Adam Curry. And from northern Silicon Valley, where I remain, I'm John C. Dvorak. We return on Thursday. Uh, please remember us at dvorak.org slash NA because it's 420 on Thursday. Do we need to say it any longer? Uh, end of show mixes. We've got uh, Sean O. We got Jesse Coy Nelson and Danny Luce with a classic uh, whoopee. And up next, 
DH Unplugged, the most recent episode on your No Agenda stream. Stay tuned at trollroom.io or noagendastream.com. Until Thursday, adios, mofos, a hooey hooey, and such. Cis. Gender dysphoria. I don't know what all that means. There aren't cis kids. Cisness is the delusion. Cisness is the lie. You force it on them. Transness is what we actually are. We are fluid. I really don't know what all that means. We are God. God is change. God is trans. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. God is trans. God is trans. God is trans. The Lord rebuke you, Satan, and all of your demons and all of your imps. We're saying, be whatever you are, baby. Demons and imps. Demons and imps. Demons and imps. Demons and imps. Be free. Be water. Be light. Be sky. Be God. Guess what? Guess guess, guess what? Guess, guess, Guess what? Guess what? That's what we actually are. Donate. 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 Slash and a don't don't need for filtered slash and a don't don't need don't don't need listen I believe in a one China policy but I would be willing to fight for Taiwan Dvorak.org slash N-A What the hell was that?